Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to WWE Aftershock, the first episode of the year. The first episode of 2024, and uh, it's already kind of going south, because we already we had to do a reschedule, because we're recording this on Monday, so by the time you see this, this episode's going to be pretty much uh, non-existent, because uh, Raw would have already happened, so like, you know, CM Punk could have come out and quit the company on Monday Night Raw, just be like, done, and uh, we wouldn't have even known about it, so, you know, um... But, uh, I'm Owen the Birdman Finch, and I'm here with... Chris! And are you ready for, like, a great 2024 full of content for, uh, this channel? Because this is actually technically the first video on the channel, because the press conference is going on the Casual Mania channel. But are you ready to just kick all types of ass and just have fun doing videos this year? Sure. Um, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. Um... Maybe. Yeah, we're just gonna... I mean, the show is gonna stay the same as it was. Uh, nothing's really gonna change about it. We will apologize. We didn't really get to finish and do, like, a big episode of WWE Aftershock at the end because, uh, you know, of the holidays and sickness and, uh, you know, storms and everything like that kind of got in the way. Um, did you ever end up, by the way, I never even asked you, but I know this... The fans aren't gonna know what we're talking about here, but did you ever lose, like... The week we had that big storm, like, right before Christmas, did you ever lose cable or Wi-Fi or anything like that? Or were you pretty much... Didn't, lo didn't lose no. anything. <laughs> so I guess you just got... I, I, I guess you were one of the lucky ones, so... But yeah... I was. But yeah, we're gonna... Uh, we're starting off with a clean slate because we had, uh... This was, like, the first week of WWE shows. They uh, went all out for this week. Um... You know, it, what do they call it? The New Year's Showdown or something? It was like, it was they themed this week around that. Yeah. It was, some, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to get started. Uh, we're going to start with War. But, there's a caveat for it. Because main event's taped before War. Um, we're going to do main event first, and then I'm going to let you go through War. Um... This was the day one version of Monday Night Raw. You know, they brought back the day one concept, you know, because Raw took place on New Year's Day. Um, pretty cool they brought this back, you know. Uh, they, I like the fact that they had it just be a part of uh, Monday Night Raw versus how they did it before was a pay-per-view. Because that was a pretty crappy name for a pay-per-view. At least it's a Monday Night Raw. It was a pay-per-view. Um, you know. Now it's not. Yeah. But this was kind of like, you know... Um, what AEW and what Impact was kind of doing for a bit, where it was pretty much a pay per view on free television. That's kind of what this. That's kind of what this was right here. Um, so we'll start with main event. This is kind of like the pre show uh, that you can watch for a few days because you know main event doesn't end until Wednesday. Um, actually, I couldn't watch main event uh, for a few days because um, they didn't put on Hulu right away. They didn't put on Hulu until like Sunday. So. I was thinking we were doing the show Saturday, so I'm like, crap, I gotta find a way to watch main events. So let's just say I had to kind of watch main events illegally uh, this, this last week. Ooh. Yeah, that's, that's very illegal. You fucking illegal motherfucker. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I didn't have a choice. I had to get the show done. So, um, But yeah, the commentary team for main event was Wade Barrett and Byron Saxton. I thought they did fairly okay on main event. They were, you know... They were pretty good. Wade Barrett wasn't very happy to see By um, Byron Saxon. He says he was enjoying, um, you know, his two his week off without having to see him. So it kind of put him in a sour mood for the rest of the episode. So, you know, poor Byron. He just gets crapped on all the time. Um, but, yeah, we had the we had the show. Uh, it, it opened up with the Kiro Tozawa with Maxine Dupuis versus Bronson Reed. This was relatively a good match. It was relatively the same match that we've seen these guys have before. Um, where, um, you know, uh, Akira Tozawa got a lot of offense in, but then eventually Bronson Reed, his power, um, overtook Akira Tozawa, and eventually he just beat him with the, uh, tsunami. Uh, I'm surprised Tozawa's not dead by this point, because he's taken several tsunamis. And, uh, he... Tsunami! Yeah, and obviously Wade Barrett loves to make the call. He gets very into it. Yeah, this match was good. I gave him three stars, you know. Uh... Tozawa didn't look, didn't, you know, look pretty strong in defeat. And then we had, uh, the main event of, the main event portion of the show. It was, uh, Johnny Gargano with Tommaso Ciampa versus Eyeball with Valhalla. A lot of people are probably worried, because why is Johnny Gargano and, you know, Ciampa on main events? 
I assume they moved this match to main event because I imagine had a certain superstar not been on Raw this week, they thought this match probably would have been on the, sh the actual Raw show itself, but uh, we'll get to that later. But there was a certain return that happened that I think caused a lot of stuff to not make air, so they had to put on YouTube or, uh, you know, this match I think got moved to main event. But this match was uh, really good. They've never really mixed it up. The main event of main event. Yeah, but this match was really back and forth. Um, eventually, uh, Johnny Gargano beat Ava with a roll-up, uh, which I thought made Ava look strong in defeat because, uh, you know, both of them really couldn't lose this match here, but I think DIY needed to win more because we're going to talk about it later. It looks like they're going to be feeding with Judgment Day for the tag titles, and uh, they needed to get a big win here, so it was good that Gargano got that win. Uh, so, yeah, this match was really good, though. I give it, like, three and a half stars. Uh, it's a really good match. Um, and that was main event. I, I'm just gonna—I'm not gonna grade main event as its own thing since it's part of the day one raw. I'll just grade it with that. Uh, you can't really grade main event anyway. Just you never watch it, so uh, you know you can't really grade something you didn't see. Incomplete. There you go. It gets an incomplete. Um, but you can't really grade it though because uh, it's part of raw, so you have to grade it included. I don't know how that's gonna work though. An incomplete with whatever your grade is. I don't know how that works. But we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, you want to take us through uh, Monday Night Raw for uh, this week? Maybe, maybe I will. Okay. <laughs> Pressure, Jesus. Oh, do I gotta do this? Do I gotta start <laughs> saying please now too because of the press conference? Do I gotta start <laughs> saying please? Okay, we'll do it. So, day one Raw happened. I guess if you didn't know, it happened in January first. 2024 in San Diego, California, and um, they opened the show up with Bar with Wade Barrett and Michael Cole in the ring, uh, just going over um, the card for the night. And I kind of I, I I really like this like presentation style with Wade and Michael being Michael Cole being in the ring with Wade Barrett and. Um, Going over the card, like I really, I really, I, I actually really enjoyed. Yeah, that. I thought that was great. Um, I didn't expect it either. You could kind of tell that was the way they were going because, uh, you know, typically when you hear them, you could definitely tell they were on the microphone versus the headset because they were like echoey and everything like that. So you could definitely tell that the crowd could hear them. But it was pretty cool. I wish they did this for uh, every show that happened. Um, like I wish they did it for like NXT, New Year's Eve, and I wish they did it for. Uh, Smackdown. I wish they did it for every show. I thought that would have been cool. Obviously, just for one week. You don't have to do this every week. But I wouldn't complain if they did this for, like, you know, every big wall or big Smackdown. But, you know, um, I liked this presentation. The presentation looked, was really awesome. I really loved it. Um, so we kicked off with a... Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax match, and they kind of go over their history a lot in the, in the video package about um, how uh, Nia basically broke Becky Lynch's face and made her, and she became super popular because of it. Um, which uh, you know, the video package is something they've played a lot recently. They added a few things like uh, Becky uh, trying to beat the crap out of Nia for bringing up their daughter, for bringing up her daughter Rue. Um, but yeah, it's a it's it's a pretty good video package. Um, into the match itself, I mean, it was really good match again. Becky just really carried it again. Uh, now it just proves that like whoever she's in the ring with, if the person's good, they can carry her in the match because she's just god awful. Yes. Um, and uh, at one point, uh, she Be uh, Becky gets nailed with a fucking uh, Samoan drop. Off this, off the second rope, and it didn't get the three count. Uh, but then uh, Nia Jax wins with her uh, annihilator. I think they're calling it um, for the victory. Uh, it really shocked everyone, including myself. Uh, didn't think that Nia was going to win that match. I like Becky uh, should have won, but uh, this the signing was forced upon Triple H with the Nia Jack signing, so I guess he's trying to fucking make something with it. Uh, but yeah, it was decent. It was a it was a, it was a good match. We're doing style ratings tonight for all the shows since it's a good show, so we gotta get the style rated. 
Um, I'll give it two and a half stars. Yeah, I thought this match was good. I give it three stars. Uh, they did a nice callback too because Becky went to go off. It was right before the annihilator. She went to go off the second dumb buckle. Um, and then, you know, they redid the whole thing when Nia punched her in the face. And Becky got cut open again this time around. Like, uh, I mean, not as bad this time, obviously. But, um, but yeah, uh, you know, I wasn't su too surprised Nia won. I was surprised at first, but then I'm thinking they probably want to extend this feud to give Becky and Nia, more particularly Becky, something to do going into the Rumble. I imagine what's going to happen is uh, they're going to have a match on the Go Home episode of Raw before the Rumble. It'll be like no DQ or something, or a cage match, and Becky will win that one to kind of, you know, get some momentum behind her in the Rumble, so, uh, you know. Um, or they could, you know, feud after the Rumble and stuff, too, and, you know, maybe go, maybe have a match at the cha Elimination Chamber. Uh, overall, this was good. Um, give it three stars. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't really blame Triple H for trying to make something out of this Naya signing. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, like you said, when she's in the ring with the right person, she usually provides the goods, mainly because she's being carried and everything like that. Because um, I'm pretty sure she was in the ring with someone that was, like, really bad. It was a really bad match. I don't know who it was. But, um, yeah, overall, this for what this was, this was good. I give it three stars. Um, and, you know, I think they, you know, because we got to feel good stuff happening throughout the night, I think they met, they kind of did that to the crowd. Um, so, you know, I was, I was okay with the result here. So then, we go on to, um, they show, uh, two weeks ago on Raw, it was, uh, Nakamura was doing his, uh, his read on his book that he wrote pretty, pretty mean, pretty, pretty mean, uh, book that he that he wrote, that he, uh, pretty mean that he was targeting Cody like that. <laughs> Didn't like that. That was right now very nice. Um, but it shows them brawling and then, and whatnot. And, uh, and it was really, I really liked that, the video package a lot. And then Cody comes to the ring, um, for his first appearance, obviously in 2024, because it's 20, it's the first day of 2024. Um, and it's basically him just coming out and just talking about Shinsuke again. Um, yeah, it's a, it was a decent uh, in ring segment. I would have liked to have seen like a face to face with them, but I can get why they're why they're holding off on it. Uh, but yeah, I, it was a pretty pretty good promo by Cody. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, they set up a match between Cody and Nakamura for tonight's Raw. Because we're recording this on Monday. Um, overall, this was relatively good. Uh, it was relatively a lot of the same stuff they've been doing, but it was still good stuff. I think, you know, it was the first time of the year we saw Cody, so they kind of got away with doing a little bit of repetition booking, you know, because everyone just loves Cody and everything like that. I think the reason they don't do a face-to-face, -face too, is because obviously they want to keep Nakamura's segments, you know, pre-taped and everything like that, because they can add in the subtitles and everything like that, so, you know, um, it's been a really good presentation to his character. Um, yeah, I'll be interested to see what happens next week, just because, uh, you know, um, I don't know, I expect, because they had a match a few weeks ago, that didn't have a finish. It, it was a DQ. I imagine someone's gonna win next week, and uh, it's probably gonna end up being Cody. But I don't think it'll be the end of the feud. I think Nakamura will just attack him again. Um, Cause I on a house show recently they did a bowl match, and I think they're gonna do that on TV. Um, probably that will probably be also the go home. Test in the waters to, for for what they can do. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I feel like they should have saved the match until. Uh, like the go home episode of the Rumble, um, this match should have been the first match they had that's coming up. I think that, I, I feel like they kind of blew the load a little bit when they had their first match, just because a little bit, yeah. Um, but overall, this is still relatively good. I've, I'm enjoying this storyline, um, and you know, because uh, the thing is too, this keeps Cody doing something um, up until the Rumble and everything like that. Because uh, even though he was in a few with the Judgment Day, you could kind of tell that he was just kind of put in it just to give him something to do. This way, he's kind of doing his own thing. Because if you remember, he really wasn't even feuding with Judgment Day. It was like KO and Sammy, really, that were feuding with uh, Judgment Day. He was just yeah. kind of brought into it. 
Um, but again, we talk. He was just yeah, there. Again, we talk about it though. It's just it's such a because the presentation is so different. It doesn't really matter what you do with Toad Like, do you remember like it back? I mean, I know we keep talking about this. Back in 2021, how directionless he was in AEW, and you can tell the effect in him. He's kind of, he was kind of a, he, a bit directionless a little bit towards the end of the year last year, but he's just so over. It doesn't even matter. It didn't even matter. Like, that's how. He can just do whatever he fucking wants at this point. Like, he's. He can be as direct, directionless as possible, and it won't matter because he's still yeah. over. Um, so it's just crazy. I guess it just shows, like, the, how. You know, if. if, if no matter your presentation, you know, it's just, yeah. It's just crazy to think, like, at AEW, him being directionless is what killed his AEW career. And if anything, it's actually making his WWE career right now. Like, he's just... It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's weird because, like, um, even though he's, like, directionless right now, it's basically, he's basically just waiting for room. Hopefully. We'll get to that. At, at this yeah. point. And it's, like, they're trying to, like, have him do like different stories between them. Yeah. But you know, at least this is somewhat of a story. It also it kind of the story is kind of it's good too. I yeah. love it. It's been awesome. But you could definitely tell this feud is just kind of a placeholder. For, uh, you know. Oh, it is 100. percent But it's still but it's been good stuff. You know, nothing. Nothing. Good. It's it's been good. It's been Nakamura look incredibly strong. Yeah, so I've liked this. Even going back to when Nakamura was feuding with Seth, like he's really viewed a lot differently now than he than, than he has been in years past. And we and we have one man to thank for that. Triple Triple H. Triple H. <laughs> triple H. Um, next we have it's a tag team match between Kofi Claus and Main Event James. No, it was, so. it was Versus it was just Kofi. It was just Kofi Kids and no Kofi Claus this time. He wasn't in the Kofi Claus. That guy, he's a, he's in the North Pole for the winter, so I don't know what he's about. That's depressing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it, this this was basically set up by uh, Kofi Face, um, Ludwig Kaiser, and uh, it was two on one, and then uh, and then Jay made the save. Uh, it's because Woods is out with injury right now, so it's uh, it's a. Um, it's a way for Kofi to be on TV. Oh, okay. uh, still, I was wondering what happened in the woods. So, because 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 Woods is out with injury. Yeah, no, he's pretty banged up. He's been doing a lot of shit recently. So yeah, he's he's a bit banged up. Kind of kind of um, a depressing time for the new day because uh, it seems like uh, any time they get some momentum going again, one of them gets hurt because uh, that happened last year. Because didn't Kofi get hurt and then Xavier had to? Kofi got yeah. hurt. Yeah. And then by the time they came back... They are also so directionless, too. Yeah. They really became directionless after Big E kind of got hurt, too. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, because they haven't really done anything of significant recently. Um, they just like the face tag team. They're like the face ta- uh, tag team that's like super over still. And is uh, super popular, so they're trying to find ways to put them on TV. Yeah. I feel like, too... Uh, the fact that they don't have the record too for the longest tag title has kind of not hurt them big, but it's kind of hurt them a little bit. But that was kind of the thing for a while. Yeah, it was like their, it was it was their like their thing was like, hey, we've been we beat Demolition, we beat you know we're the best at we're the, we're the longest reigning tag team champions ever. And like when that kind of went away, it kind of it kind of it, it kind of made them feel kind of stale. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think a heel turn is going to be, like, a thing that saves the New Day, like a lot of people would have thought. But um, I just think that it's, like, at this point, they can't go heel. And I can't. I don't think they should wake up either, because that's the lazy solution. Um, unless... They can't, I, I, rather, I would love to see them going on, uh, getting them a tag team title run. Yeah, well, no. yeah, that'd be nice. But yeah, anyhow, take us through this match right here. So it's main event, James Abby. Uso and Kofi Kingston. The real main here. event, too, not the show. The real main event, Jey Uso. Awesome. Uh, this match doesn't go for very long because uh, at, at a certain point in the match, uh, Giovanni Vinci went for a uh, like a cross body off the top rope or something, and Kofi like nails him 
with a drop kick, and uh, Vinci's head smashes off the map and knocks himself unconscious. Yep. Um, so the winner via referee stoppage was Kofi and Jay Uso. And it was really kind of odd because they... I felt like this match was going to be... This match was going to be very good, but it just... I mean, it's best to err on the side of uh, caution yeah. with, with, a, with a head injury like that. And now for them to just be like, oh, let's just roll Vinci out of the ring and then here comes Kaiser and he's going to take him on 2-1-1. It's like, no, that's like... We're stopping this thing and... It, it was the right thing to do. It, and uh, Giovanni Vinci came out on Twitter and said that he's that he's okay, that he's that he's good. Uh, so that's good at least. Um, but yeah, that was a very scary thing that happened. And thank, thankfully, he's okay. Yeah. And it was the right pause. That was the right thing for him to do to stop the match. And yeah, that's that's a. Uh, I'm not gonna give it a rating because it's just it, it just wouldn't be fair to either to the to the competitors like. Yeah, this was a. Uh, it uh, then via stoppage. This was obviously like fairly scary. Um, you know, you could tell something was off too, just because uh, the match was called off like right when Jay got his hot tag. Like he didn't even get to do anything really. Like they just called the match off. Uh, but it's good that they called the match off. You know, because uh, you know they could have just kept the match going and have uh, Russell Bartel just wrestle the match himself. But that would have just been weird. Um, you know, especially because you'd be going up against two faces. Like, I feel like, uh, you know, it was... A resilient yeah. deal. <laughs> so I feel like they, they made the right call there. Um, yeah, good to see that he's fine now. Um, even though he's probably going to, you know, he, he uh, he's fine. I expect him, he's probably not going to wrestle this week. He's probably just going to be, you know, he probably won't take, I don't expect him to take like a big bump or anything like that this week. I imagine he'll just be win side. Um, I would think so, yeah, because that's just just to have him there. But like, in case of like his impact test is not uh, conclusive. But I yet. expect, uh, you know, if he's if he's saying that he's fine, I expect he'll be back in the mix again um, by like Royal Rumble time. He'll do he'll be he'll be in the Rumble because he can still if he you know he could be in the Rumble and he doesn't have to be in the Rumble for all that very long. He can he can be eliminated fairly quickly and stuff. So yeah, he should be good. He should be good to go by the Rumble. Um, but yeah, good. You know. Just to be, you know, just to, I gave it two stars. I think that's a fair rate, and you know, good thing that they stopped the match, and you know, good thing, uh, you know. Uh, but yeah, it was weird. Um, I imagine that they were just gonna give the win to. What? Do, by the way, do we? Because the match has stopped so abruptly. What's like the result of the match that it says on your website? Does it say, say that Kofi and Jay won, or did it just say no contest? I'm actually kind of curious about that. Uh, when it be a, when it be a referee stoppage. Okay. Um. Cause I don't think, uh, for my memory, I don't think they made it. Cause uh, you know it was so abrupt. I don't think they made it very clear. It, it did. It was so weird because they like they like took the camera off of off of uh, off of him to, for like a second, like Giovanni Vinci, and then like they they had the camera off of him, and then they like went back to the ring, and it was like they showed Jay, they showed Jay and Kofi, and it was like, is he is he dead? Like like what? Like what? Happened? And then the weirdest thing about it was uh, they don't typically show a replay if someone gets like injured, but they actually showed the replay of his injury and everything like that. So it was kind of weird. It was like a it was like a harmless thing that happened. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, it was just like a regular. It was like a he went for like a cross body or something, and then Kofi hit him with like a with like a drop hit to the to the chest, and like his head just whacked off the fucking mat. Yeah. Um. Luckily, they didn't have to worry about, you know, because this time got cut, they just, they probably just added to, some time to, uh, you know, the big return that happened. Um, on this show. Like, probably, yeah. I don't think, it, I think the match is going to probably end shortly after this, probably. Anyway. I don't know. Yeah, when that Jay got his hot tag. So. Anyhow, yeah, let's just continue break, the break is down of uh, Monday Night Raw. So, um... They, they did a bunch of segments next, and uh, the Miss TV happened, and it was Miss TV with special with special guest the Judgment Day. We thinking we're thinking we're gonna get a Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. Well, we did. Well, we, we, uh, did. we did. But it was it was it was we thinking we were, we were gonna get a big Judgment Day segment, and it turns out the Judgment Day music hits. Only for it to come to our <laughs> The only fucking member of, of, of the Judgment Day that matters is our group. 
Yo, you look like he, uh, he's told. That was he's so totally in the Judgment Day. You agree with that, right? Oh, he's in the Judgment Day. Yeah, he beat fucking. He beat JD. He should be in the Judgment Day. Yeah, we'll get to that later. That was so fucking funny. That had me. <laughs> I wish we. I wish we did um, do that week. That was so good. Uh, but yeah, like it. it it's a. I'm not gonna like go over this. Just go back and watch the fucking. Uh, just go back and watch Miss TV. It will have you in tears because how funny it is. Um, and it basically what it sets up is a tag team match between the Awesome Truth and Judgment Day. Yeah. Of comprised of Dominic Mysterio and JD McDonough. Who somehow is still in Judgment Day even though he lost. I don't understand that, but whatever. <laughs> I forget that he lost. <laughs> No matter how much he's freaking petitioning it, he lost. <laughs> and it was so funny. Like, in that in that promo, it was like, Truth was trying to, like... Tr like, uh... Miz was trying to, like... Convince Truth that, like, they were tag-teaming against fucking the Judgment Day. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. That what dying. I loved about... I was like, oh my what god. What I loved about this... Our Truth actually thinks that, that it's... <laughs> that it's, yeah. uh... And Dom versus J JD and Miz. I think too. Uh, I don't know what Achu thought because we can't get inside his head. But like, he's like, "Oh, I see what's going on." He's like, "Dom, I'll follow your lead." It's like, "What is going on?" <laughs> like, <laughs> I think what he was thinking was, was he gonna? I think he was gonna do like a setup where like he was gonna like turn heel um, on the Miz. But it's what's funny about this too, because you'll break down the match. When the match starts, he beats the crap out of JD, but to him and Dharma, like, he thinks him and Dharma like cool. It's like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, very odd. Uh, it's really odd. Uh, it's, it's yeah, the best. it's awesome. Um, so, so we come back to that tag team match, and it's just a really, it's a, it's basically like a glorified like comedy match. Yeah. Uh, with with some seriousness in it, but it's got truth in it, so it's gonna be somewhat right. funny. I loved it. This match is great. Um, yeah, and awesome truth win with us when Miz uh, um, hit a skull crushing finale on JD McDonough for the win. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. Give it fucking three yeah, stars. Yeah, this was awesome. Because um, the best part about this is uh, our truth. You know, has to make a choice here. He's got to like earn his keep in the judgment day. And you know, Dom is uh, holding the Miz in place, and our truth doesn't have a choice but to deck him. No, I think it's JD. I think JD's doing this because he's the, um, and then our truth inadvertently hates J hits JD, and then the Miz lays him out with the uh, skull crusher finale. But this was uh, yeah, this this was uh, great. And I think I pitched the storyline. Uh, I think this should, like, tie in where, like, our truth, you know, we find out later on um, that he's actually doing this to, uh, this is going to be, like, the thing that causes one of the, the Judgment Day to break up, like, long-term type of thing. Like, uh, you know, this will cause either Damien to get kicked out or Finn to get kicked out. Um, and our truth will reveal that this was, like, his past book plan all along. But, that's a good um, but yeah, I love this. Um, and... It's actually kind of cool, like, it's kind of the Sami Zayn bloodline storyline all over again, but, like, this one's really funny, because R-Truth actually thinks he's in the faction, but he's not even in the faction, <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, I think this is the difference between, uh, like, the Triple H booking, because if Vince had booked the Judgment Day thin, I think it would have been done by now, but this is actually, like, yeah, because I think when we first saw this, we thought this was just going to be a one-time thin, but... It, They've actually continued it. Like they've, they've actually made this a thin, and everyone loves it. Like this is awesome. Um, I think Fantastic. I think Awesome Truth's gonna be the team that ends up taking the tag title. Which I'm pleased to be I don't know how that's gonna work, but I don't know what's gonna happen. <clears throat> they should. I'll just mention this now too. It'd be amazing. This was a segment that I think they were supposed to be on the show, um, but didn't make it because of the big return that happened. Um, they did some segments backstage with the Judgment Day, where, um, you know, um, Awesome Truth had a big backstage segment, and DIY came up and basically won a tag title match with them. So Loud Truth said he's gonna go talk to Adam Pierce about it, 
And Finn Balor found out later in the night that he was booked in a match with uh, Tommaso Ciampa um, for the next episode of Raw, which is tonight's Raw. Um, and Artus is like, yeah, I took care of business, you know? And Finn Balor doesn't really want to do the match, but our truth uh, kind of goes him into it inadvertently because he's like, well, we have to show that we're not cowards or anything like that. And this makes Finn want to do the match. So uh, pretty much that was kind of what they did there. Again, I think these segments were meant to take place on Raw, but I think they were cut for time, so they just put them on the YouTube channel. But uh, if you haven't seen them, they're really funny. Uh, and, you know, it was good that they set up a match. I'm glad that DIY is getting the next uh, tag title shot, because I think they deserve it. Oh, they absolutely deserve it. Because there was no Finn Balor. Like, he was backstage, but Finn Balor wasn't actually on Raw, like, at all. Like, he was just... Uh, no fit, no fit, but he was backstage, so I, I assume, uh, you know, he was clearly meant to be on the show somehow, but obviously, uh, with the big return that happened, they cut the segments that he was meant to be on. Yeah. Um, oh, that, it makes yeah. sense, yeah. But, you know, it was still good. It was, yeah, it was. Um, so now we have Katana Chance and Kaden Carter. They showed them winning two weeks ago to the most... No reaction possible. Um, and then they do a fucking club segment with uh, with Chelsea Green, with Chelsea Piper, and Katana and Kaden. I didn't fucking care about it, so I don't care. The only, the only um, know with it is that it set up a woman's tag title match for the next episode of Raw. So. They fucking lose, dude. But they won't. The only reason I can come up with why they're um, champs is they're probably putting the belts on. Um, what's the name of that? The Kabuki Warriors, so they needed a face tag you know, for them to beat. Because uh, yeah, they weren't gonna like they weren't gonna beat Chelsea and Piper just because they're too heelish for them to go. That's the yeah. only reason I could come up with why they won the tag. So pretty much, yeah. But yeah, this yeah. Uh, really, the only bad segment on the show. Ivy Nile comes out with the Creed Brothers and whatnot, but it leads to the match with uh, Ivy Nile versus Rhea Ripley. Um, this match, again, really, really good. It shows that Ivy can go uh, and that she's not just a fucking manager. Uh, this match is awesome. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Rhea hits the Riptide and wins, which, it was, I mean, it was kind of expected, but it's not. it was like a, kind of like a good thing. It was kind of like a good, like a, like a, a good match that was like obviously Rhea was gonna win, but like it was still very good. Yeah, I, I give it three stars. I give it three and three quarters. I thought this was very good. Um, they did have me a couple of times where Ivy got a few near falls, so she looked strong in defeat. But you know, it was still pretty obvious that Rhea wasn't gonna win the title. You know, you know, at least she got a title defense in there, and it was someone that like you know we thought had a chance of uh, defeating her somewhat. So. Still very good stuff. I give it to you. Yeah, it was very good. I, 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 a lot of people are starting to become super impressed now with, uh, with, with, uh, with Ivy Nile, and seeing her being pushed to the moon right away is amazing. Yeah, this should have been happening in NXT. Uh, she should have gone like an NXT type. But, you know, it didn't happen. So. I'm happy that's happening on Raw. I don't think she'll get like a. A title run unless they do the draft and she goes to SmackDown because I don't think she's going to get a title run probably if she stays on the wall. She'll probably just be in contention and <coughs> get the title. Uh, but we'll see. Yeah. So now, uh, backstage they have Seth Rollins and he's warming up for his match against Drew McIntyre. Uh, and, they, and they're and hyping up the speculation of a former WWE champion appearing. Yep. Um... So now we get to that, and Samantha, and, and Samantha Irving gets on the mic, and uh, uh, it's the we're all wait, uh, well, the moment that we've all been waiting for. It's the former, it's the a former WWE champion, and out walks who else <laughs> but fucking Jinder Mahal, the ultimate troll, Paul Levesque, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, you fucking troll. Uh, it was hysterical. <laughs> that. I, I was I was laughing so the hard. The best part about it, because this is actually the crowd was so deflated when Jinder Mahal came out. They were freaking pissed. <laughs> that was so funny. I literally 
I could not stop laughing. You, I was like, you fucking troll. You knew, it was, you knew what was coming here. You knew this was like a setup for someone to come out and beat him up. And him. Oh, it was a setup for someone. It was a setup for someone. But I just love... But it was so funny. I love... It, 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 it is a former WWE champion, though. But what's funny about this is how the crowd just bought into it, too. Like, it's just... Uh, my cousin and I are in, like, a group text with my uncle and stuff. And, uh... He's just like, don't even bother watching the former WWE champion, man. I just turned it off because it's like... But anyhow, yeah, so my cousin just turned off the TV. He's like, I ain't gonna watch this guy. I'm like, oh, you're being work, buddy. Because, uh, yeah, what do you... Well, before we actually get to the big return, why don't we... Because Jinder has some things to say. Why don't you talk about what Jinder Mahal says? He was being very mean. He <laughs> was. Very mean. He, uh... He just basically he insulted America, and uh, he he basically played the, he basically saying the United States national anthem of Punjab, and um, the only good thing that came out of this is the fact that he had his old theme song back. Yeah, definitely. And he he was talking just mad shit really was. about uh, about America, and who else? Who comes to save the day? Then the man that we have not seen on a WWE in a WWE ring in a WWE arena since October, mm-hmm. and his name is The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and it was awesome. Uh, San Diego came unglued. <laughs> when the when the rocks music kit. that was fucking really awesome. Was. Um, he does his entrance and he and they, and they show the fucking his arm again. Uh, just goosebumps. You can see them on his arm. It's fucking awesome. It was sick. Um, it was uh, it was just it was amazing. Uh, once again, like this is Rock's first appearance on Raw in ages. Um, and how lucky for us that we get. Two rock appearances within within a couple of months of each yeah. other. What um, what what pl- like like what um like what pleasure do we have? Like what, like like why like why is this happening? And you know, Dave Meltzer talked about this. Like, the reason uh, they didn't advertise it in advance and everything like that was because the walk loves to get the reaction. So basically, if the walk does do a surprise appearance. Basically, it's going to be what it was. Triple H or someone will just announce a former WWE Champions appearance. And then, uh, you know, pretty much how it was laid out was basically how The Walk will appear. Uh, if it's a surprise, anyway. You might see The Walk sooner again. Than we think. But yeah, this was awesome. The fact that we got, like, two Walk surprise appearances um, <clears throat> was great. Um, and yeah, it's just insane that... Because, uh, you know... We never get to see the rock all that much, and we, in the span of probably three months, we see him twice now, which doesn't happen. Right now, so it was awesome. That was unbelievable. Um, he 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 basically just goes off on on Jinder Mahal, and um, he basically he basically uh, he he has the WWE universe do the, do a chance again. Um, awesome. Just fucking, just amazing. Um, the best part to me then, was, uh, before you get to, he took a shot at himself because he mentioned, uh, a movie that just came out recently. <laughs> and Junior just talks about how he never saw it and the laugh was just like, yeah, it's okay. Not a lot of people did see it. So that was awesome. Like, <laughs> not a lot of people saw Dune. <laughs> he was like, he took a shot at himself, which was awesome. Always does that, and I, I, I love the fucking day one douchebag chant. Like that was like he he like he knows how to do those yeah. perfectly. Oh, and they he and I I will always always say this. He has a WWE universe in the palm of his fucking hand, and he loves every second. Of and it. we should mention too, this was a TV fourteen segment. They didn't bleep anything out or anything like that, like they typically do. No, they didn't. Which yeah. is awesome. Because I think the last one uh, wasn't uh, wasn't bleeped out. I think the last one. No, the last one was bleeped out. The last one. Was. No, the last one was bleeped out. Um, 
I don't know why they did that. It's on Fox. It's weird. Um, so Rock, so Jinder gets pissed and starts fighting the Rock, beating up the Rock, and the Rock fights back and he hits him with his pad of Rock punches, hits the spine of the pine, and hits him with the people's elbow. And he he grabs the mic and says, um, that tonight. Uh, Rock is hungry. He's gonna go with to grab a bite to eat. Do you want to sit him at? The, do you want to? Do you want to see the rocks at the bo- at, at a booth? Kind of got a kind of got a, a booth. Um, would you like to see me uh, eat it at a bar? That kind of got a bit of a cheer. Or do you want to see me eat at the head of the table? And <laughs> and San Diego went fucking ballistic. And uh, he basically hit them with the hip. You smell the rock is cooking, and that was uh, that was incredible. Yeah, that reaction was was amazing. Um, it was awesome. I loved it. The whole segment was fucking great. Um, it's electrifying. It's everything. Just go back and watch the whole fucking thing. It's funny. It's it's witty. It's 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 awesome. Um, yeah, looks like we're getting a rock match, which is fucking bizarre. Something that we never thought we'd be getting. Yeah, uh, this is awesome. Uh, this is the first time where The Rock has made some type of reference to uh, Roman Reigns since uh, he became the Tribal Chief. Um, and, you know, obviously a lot of people are concerned. Um, I think it's awesome we get a rock match, no matter how we get it, by the way. We'll talk about, like, the concerning part of it, obviously, when we get there. But, uh, you know, um, I never thought I would see The Rock wrestle again. The last time he did, like, a full match was WrestleMania 29, which is, uh, believe it or not, over 10 years ago. Um, And, uh, yeah, this is just insane. However, there's a problem with this now because, uh, you know, there's a conflict now with... uh, Cody Rhodes and that everything that WWE has been building. Um, because this was teased months ago when he made his appearance back in October. And we were kind of like, okay, if it has to happen that way, it has to. Cody kind of wasn't close to really doing the story yet. And, you know, it looked like we could have gotten the match because the, the Hollywood strikes were going on at the time and everything like that. But then once the strikes ended, we were thinking we weren't going to get the match again because obviously we didn't think The Rock would come back. Well, then we have, uh, you know, another horseshoe through into the ring type of thing. Um, because uh, now we're at the point now where, you know, Cody kind of does need to finish his story. Um, because, um, you know, we're getting close to WrestleMania. Everyone wants to see Cody finish his story. He's really over right now. And, um, you know, I feel like... You know, they got away with it last year, luckily. Um, you know, because Cody stayed relatively popular and everything like that. But I just don't think uh, we can really go into WrestleMania this year without Cody finishing his story. Uh, however, though, if you have the opportunity to, be, to have the Rock show up, then you really can't, you know, squander that. Now, obviously, we've talked about the solution. Uh, the solution would be, obviously, Elimination Chamber. It's going to be in Australia. They want the walk. It's going to be in a big stadium, too. It's going to be a big enough show. I think you just do the walk versus Roman Reigns at Elimination Chamber. And then, you know... Because I don't think Cody's winning the Rumble. Uh, that's finally how Cody and Roman meet each other back again, you know. Solo screws over uh, the walk. And then um, Cody makes the save. Or Jay makes the save, but it's probably going to be Cody. Um, and, um, you know, because you could do something, too, where, like, Jimmy tries to get involved, and then Jay attacks him. And then, you know, when Solo tries it, Solo still interferes, but then afterwards, Solo and Roman beat down the rock. Cody makes the save, and that's how you get to Cody versus, uh, you know, Roman. And, you know, there's another build match that you can do out of that. You can do a tag match with uh, Jimmy and the Rock. Not J- sorry, Jay and the Rock versus Jimmy and Solo. Um, that way, Solo can have a match at Mania and the Rock, you know, can have a match. You can have the Rock at Mania also. It's still involved with Love Rock story. Um, some people said the problem with doing the Rock versus Roman in Elimination Chamber is not a lot of people would see it because, you know, Elimination Chamber would be airing at 630 
I mean, some people are saying this, though, like, they're thinking the match is going to open the show. Like, it's going to go on main events. Um, but the match would air probably roughly 10.30, 11 o'clock-ish, so a lot of people would be, you know, not really around. I feel like, though, I don't really think that's going to really be a concern to WWE because it's not like they can't go back and watch it later. They can just stream it later. They did that. I mean, they booked Super Showdown with The Undertaker versus Triple H, and that's what I did. So it's like, I don't understand, like... I mean, it's not like they have to watch it live. I don't think they really uh, think that way. Um, some, oh, I'm watching it live. Well, yeah, I know you are, but I'm just saying. But uh, another solution people have thrown out there is they could have Roman main event two nights like they were gonna, like they were speculated last year. They could just do it this year. He faces The Rock one night at WrestleMania in the main event, and then he faces Cody the other night. The problem with that theory is I think, uh, you know, CM Punk, I think, was promised probably a main event WrestleMania match this year, and I don't really think you want to squander that either. Yeah. Um, plus, I don't really want... I don't. The whole point of the two-night Mania system is to not have one guy main event both nights. It kind of defeats the purpose of it. Like, um, I mean, it kind of like it kinda made sense last year because there was really no big thing, no big story for night one until Kevin and Sammy versus the Usos. Yes, but this year, I think the big... The big story is CM Punk and Seth Rollins. CM Punk. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That, C- Punk, absolutely, Punk should be main event day night one. Yeah. Um, I feel like Punk will get pissed again. You know, I feel like Punk will get screwed. You're, you're kind of screwing over CM Punk if he doesn't main event WrestleMania. Um, so I think the best solution is do the Rock versus Roman at Elimination Chamber. Um, and then, you know, do Cody versus Roman at Mania. Um, because then, you know, if you don't do Cody versus Roman at Mania, what do you do with Cody at WrestleMania this year? This is kind of what you've been kind of, you know, because if you notice that Cody hasn't been feuding with guys, because I think they want to save all of his big stories for when he has the title, and if he doesn't have the title, then what do you do, yeah. what do, you do with Cody all year this year? Then It's like, um, I think that's the best bet, I think, uh, because if Cody doesn't finish the story this year, um, and also, you know, it's just going to make him, it's going to make, uh, it's also going to make his decision to leave AEW like a bad decision if he doesn't finish the story. Not completely a bad, de- somewhat somewhat. A bad decision. And also, too, I think a lot of people don't think of this. This, If Roman and Brock happens at Mania, this pretty much will be... This will pretty much determine and be confirmed that Roman's breaking hold his record. And that means we'd have to deal with Roman's title in another year, and we just can't deal with that. This year. Like, I think the best bet is to do Roman versus Brock. Um, you know... At Elimination Chamber and <clears throat> Roman versus Cody at uh, WrestleMania. But, uh, I get. It doesn't even have to be a match for the undisputed Universal WWE Championship. It doesn't even have to be. It could just be for the head of the table. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, what are you thinking? You do, do you do Cody versus, uh, uh, Roman at Chamber then, and then Roman versus Rock at Mania? Um, you know, Cody finishes the story at Chamber, because then, you know, I don't know if Cody should really finish the story at Chamber. Are you just saying, like, you know, they just have it non-title at Chamber? I I say, have have the match be Rock versus Roman at, at the Chamber, not for the uh, not for the championship, have it be for the head of the table. And then, at WrestleMania, if Cody finishes yeah. the story. Um... I'd still do it for the title because if Roman's winning, because the thing is, I think the Rock's gonna put him over anyways. Because um, also, the Roman can't lose to the Rock if it is a chamber. Because then uh, the big story would be, you know, Roman shouldn't lose a one-on-one match until uh, he loses the title. Because it's, it's kind of the Rock should squash him and end it. <laughs> Can you seconds. imagine that? Like Rock bottom, that's it, done. See ya. That's how that's how Roman <laughs> loses the belt and everything like that too. And then no, no, oh, imagine that would be funny. But uh. No, not your the story. Is it matter to him? Yeah, are you seeing the memes going around? By the way, that like the Triple H is doing this because it's like, oh, he smashed, my, he smashed the throne years ago. He's not finishing his story now. It's, those are pretty funny memes. Yeah. But anyhow, yeah. Yeah, it's the same, it's the same thing I fucking seen for like two years now. But yeah, what would you, so yeah, what would you? Uh, one last thing, and then we'll move on from this. What would you like to do with this situation? Um. Rock, Roman, Chamber, Cody, Mania. I know, because you're probably in like a... That's, 
If you talk about this off camera, you're probably in like a tough spot. You're like, walk. I'm whole happy a hero, and then uh, but like, oh wait, my boy Cody's not gonna finish the story. You're probably like in a dilemma right now. Like, I am in a dilemma. That's why I say, that's why I say, Rock Roman at at the chamber. It can be for the head of the table. It can be for the championship. Roman wins, like you said. Like Cody, like Jay tries to make a save for for Raw after doesn't happen. He gets beaten down by his by his two brothers and his cousin. And then Cody comes out, makes a save, clears house. That sets up the fucking match of media. And you know what else? can also set up, you know, a tag match. Because I feel like at this point, like, they haven't done enough to really make Jimmy built enough to uh, do Jay versus J Jimmy on his own. And by the way, not that Jimmy could have been, it's just the WWE phone no pass. Um, so, you know, a tag match is a good setup. But then, you know, you get the lot, you know, a lot of people be concerned, well, why not do it in Mania? Then you'll at least still get the lock in Mania somehow. Yeah. I feel like also, it seems like Rikishi could, could be involved. Yeah, because they're both, uh, you know, because he's in the blood. That's, that's, those are his yeah. kids. So, below in the Uso. So, yeah, there's this. And his nephew. But yeah, there's so much uh, intrigue, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, so now that we have, so now we had a few backstage segments, like with, with, with Drew and whatnot, um, they replayed the epic return of the rock. And then we had the tag team match, a tag team match with Shayna and Zoe Stark versus Tegan Knox and Natalia, two face tag teams for some reason. DM um, like that. And then, and then Shayna and Zoe win when Zoe hits the Z3, 360 for the victory. Um... Yeah, the match was just mediocre, I guess. Like, it just... That was sort of them getting the main event. I gave it, like, uh, two stars. They best. were putting a bad spot on you. You know, um... It was right after the walk. No matter what segment followed that, um... Was gonna be... Was gonna be a time for it. That's basically what it was, because they had to make up time for the tag match. I didn't even, uh... And they had a to the uh, to the, to I the return. I, I didn't even pay attention to this match at all. I was on my phone geeking out about the walk showing up, so it was like whatever. <laughs> I was just saying, I didn't pay attention. It was at just all. like, oh okay, um, this happened. I was like, oh okay, they won. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I guess I guess they won the match. Okay, cool. That just goes to show you where the women's tag division really is right now. Yeah, not in the fucking yeah. gutter. Yeah, I don't know what... Um, it kind of sucks, too, because there are a lot of talented women on this roster. And it's not that they just don't have... It's not like AEW, where it's like fucking just top-heavy as fuck. It's, it's very balanced throughout. But, um... But they just don't know, like... There's a lot of there's a lot of women that are just, like, lost in the shuffle. And are just, like... It's like Chelsea and, and, and Piper were, like, thrown together at the very last second, and then they just didn't know what to do with them. yeah. yeah. And it's after like you know several times where like they've had to vacate the tag titles or just too many so many title changes where you know Piper Piper went down with a mysterious illness and then uh, uh, um, who was it um, Sonya Deville tore ACL so it was like she needed a new partner and then Piper just mysteriously sh like showed up one day and was like I'm the fucking yeah. tag partner my belt now. It's and then, and then, and then she didn't show up for like two weeks because she was had a mysterious illness of some kind. And then, it's just like everything, just like it's discombobulated. This whole what's division so right weird now. about this too with both companies? WWE has tag division has a tag division that's being booked badly. AEW keeps creating women's tag teams and they forget they don't have a tag division. So why you keep making tag teams? <laughs> it's like what are you talking about? Um, like, what are they yeah. doing? Uh, it's just, it's just like, my hope is that 2024 comes around, like right now, and they put more emphasis yeah. on the tag team division. Maybe now with maybe them getting Julie in a few months, like, it, it puts more of an emphasis on the importance of women's wrestling yeah we definitely need that and 
and maybe it like it, it creates a different dynamic like hey like this this let's put the belts on fucking uh eo and asuka or let's put the belts on you know whoever else is in damage control and actually make them fucking feel yeah. special instead of just being like oh here's two generic fucking women that no one cares about oh here's uh kaden kaden katana kaden and and uh katana chance and it's like okay what do they do what makes them fucking interesting yeah, no nothing is what makes them interesting they are fucking blander than bland like they they don't have a gimmick that's interesting it's just they have an entrance that no one goes along with and on the main roster in in a fucking cramped little fucking uh pc building you can get away with it uh, with them going, woo, woo, but you can't do that in front of a fucking live audience. It's a different, totally different fucking crowd. It totally is. Like, no one gives a shit about these people. I don't care what their fucking finisher is. I don't care if, if uh, Katana does a fucking 450 into a, a, into a, a neckbreaker combo. It's not going to make a fucking difference if they're bland as fuck. Which gets messed up by, every time, by the way, they do that, too, by the way. They always mess that up. They can't yeah. do it right. They'll stop doing it. Like, it's just awful. Like they they're not over and it feels like they're just being shoved down our yeah. throats. And this is after they made their debut, no one gave a shit, and then they disappeared for months. Months they disappeared. And then all of a sudden they're back and other they get shoved. Katana got shoved one week and all of a sudden they're tag team yeah, champions. It's, just... it's like there was no fucking a, B, C, D. It was fucking A, D. There was no B. There was no B or C. It was from fucking straight from A to D. They skipped two. Yeah, they skipped two steps. This division. It's like you can't yeah, do that. Division. You can't. Ex, you can't expect me to be like, oh, here's Katana and Caden. Oh, here are the fucking they're there, the, the tag team champions. What happened to fucking B, C, B, B and C? You're A and D, but you skip two steps. Yeah. It's just Tag division needs some, some work in the It's been a mess ever since they made the division back. It really has been. Whether it's been injury, whether it's been inconsistencies in the booking, whether it's been tag teams not getting fucking over because no one yep. gives a shit. Like, put fucking people in tag matches that people want to see. Definitely. I don't know what's so difficult about this. This is the one fucking... I wouldn't say black mark, but the one area where Triple H has really failed, and that's the women's tag team division is so pathetically bad, it's not even funny. I know, and that's the thing I thought he would have done well. It, it, and I will say this, too, and I'm probably going to go to hate for this, but he's also failed the women's championship, too. He's failed Rhea Ripley. Like, Rhea came into 2023 hotter than a fucking firecracker. She was on fire. And you know what happened? Yeah, okay. She got caught up with the heart thing, and then every, and then and then she, you know, had to take some time away. I get that, but then to have her not wrestle for six yeah. months and take away her best asset and have her just be strictly be a manager and hold the fucking title made no this sense. Is so weird, yeah. And now you have the women's fucking tag titles, which are goddamn useless. And it's just like it's so frustrating because it should be prominent on the fucking card. And she'd be like, okay, this is why I want to tune into Monday Night Raw. I want to see how the women's tag team division is. And it's like, okay, you tune it on, you turn it on. Oh, it's fucking Katana Chance and Katie Carter who come up to zero reaction. And this match was put there. Oh, hey. The only reason this match was... Oh, hey, look, it's it's Noe Stark and Shayna Baszler who by themselves aren't really getting over but are on paper are like really talented and a really, really good tag team. Come up to zero reaction. Natalia. Fucking Natalia of all people who would come out to thunderous cheers for years comes out to fucking zero better, reaction like, now. Tag teams. Like And it's like you, you can't and I and I get where Natalia's value is. For Natty, it's in the dungeon. It's training. It's working with Jade. It's working with Ricky Starks. It's it's training people. That is where her best asset is now is training people. It's not being on TV. And they, and I hope to God that they, they're bringing more women that can help this fucking division out like Julia. 
Like that is a huge move that can help this division out in more ways than one. It's so frustrating tuning in and going, okay, that's a piss break match. That's a piss break. That's a piss break segment. Like they have Ivy Nile now. That match was fantastic. It really was. Are they gonna build off on that now? Probably not. Yeah. That's my one fucking concern. Is that yes, okay, the men's part, the men's side looks awesome. CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, Roman, The Rock, you name it. But then on the women's side, it's like SmackDown's good. You have damage control, which Bailey Event is gonna turn face, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a big boost to her fucking character. And she's gonna actually wrestle again. Um and then on raw on the raw side of things, it's it garbage. Really is, yeah. How do you expect me to invest in Kaden Carter and Katana Chance or Shayna Baszler in Zoe Stark if no one fucking cares about them? Especially no one right now. Everyone cares more about the way that Rhea's ass looks than her fucking ability in the ring. Which is a shame. It's a fucking joke. Like I'm just uh, it's insane to me how how bungled it is on the yeah. raw side. It's just weird because the division's actually pretty loaded. Like it's got a lot of women in it. Just we don't care about any of them. And then it needs to just be improved. That's my biggest thing for them in 2024. Improve the fucking women's division on the raw side. The SmackDown side is fine. I think the SmackDown side side is very good. It's the raw side is just yeah, terrible. I agree. But anyway. Uh, we get to the main event now, and it's Seth Rollins. Uh, Seth fucking Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. Um, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna go over this bit by bit, because this match was, it was a really fucking good match again. Um, just go out and watch it. Uh, at one point, uh, Judgment Day tried to get involved and screw Seth, but it didn't work, and, uh, and Drew just nailed Damian Priest at the uh, the Claymore because he's trying to cash yeah. in. Um, but yeah, like Seth wins uh, with the stomp and the one, two, three, and that and winner and still your world heavyweight champion is Seth Rollins. And I thought this match was really fucking good. Again, a really awesome main event. Again, on the men's side of things, awesome main event. Um, yeah, I give I give the match three and a half stars. This match was great. I gave it four and three quarter stars. Very back and forth. Um, I've really enjoyed this new heel side of Drew McIntyre recently. Um, what I love about him as a heel too is he acts different towards the people he faces. Like you know, he did that emotional promo with Seth a few weeks ago, um, and everything like that. Um, his his like you know character uh, change has been really good and everything like that. You know, I love the cash in spot. They told a really nice story too, where Drew does hit the claymore, but he hooked Seth Rollins' legs too too much, so he ended up getting his feet on the ropes. Um, I like that too. That was really yeah, awesome. Yeah, I don't know where, the, where Seth goes from here. I imagine they're gonna do another match, maybe a triple threat match, and throw Damian Priest in there. Um, oh, I think I think Damian needs to cash in sooner rather than later. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna be even if it's a failed attempt. Yes. Even if it's a failed attempt. At least, because at this point in time, it's not relevant anymore. And it's coming up on a year. Especially considering the fact, too, uh, um, I don't think he really should be successful. Just because, if you had asked me when he won the briefcase, obviously, I would have said, yeah, he probably should be successful. But now, with CM Punk back in the mix, I think he's going to get like a good, decent, long title reign. I just don't, unless he cashes in on Punk, but I just don't see a scenario where he can really cash in on Punk. So. I think he should just... Again, cash in on Punk, and then, like, after Punk wins at Mania. Yeah, I guess he... Cashes in Punk, but then, like, at the last second, like, Punk gets him the GTS and wins. And that causes, like, the breakup of the Judgment Day or something. Um, It could be... Like, like, he needs to cash in sooner rather than later, because if it wasn't a day one cash in, like, when he won it on at, at, at Money in the Bank, or a few nights after, it's like... His, his run as senior Money in the Bank has been kind of underwhelming. It's The briefcase has spent more time in his hands and in the air and in the fucking crowd than it has been near the ring. Yeah. Especially, too, because he's been in the tag... He was in the tag division, like, uh, most of his Money in the Bank uh, contract run and everything like that. Uh, I did make a recommendation that he could cash in on the NXT title, but that probably should have been this week. Um... 
Especially took because Dragunov's hurt. Why would you not want to go cash in on him right now? Like, uh, I don't mm -hmm. understand. Makes the most sense in the yeah. world. Um, you know. He's gonna, no, he's gonna wait till he's healthy and then lose. Yeah. Um, they could have him just carry it the rest, because I don't think, we've never actually seen someone, like, you know, hold the briefcase until, like, the last possible moment they can cash in. That's, like, a storyline. No, they don't usually do that. They do. They usually they either cash in the night of, or they wait till like. Well, Seth was kind of a last minute cash. No, because he wanted it was Mania, and he wanted it in the like I'm saying the last possible like second they can cash in type of thing. Like, you know, it'd be kind of cool. Like, yeah, if, uh, I don't. I mean, Seth, that's was kind of like a last possible second because he wanted the Mania, not the Mania prior, but yeah. like. His time was coming up, but not like last second, like you said. Um, a lot of people have predicted that uh, this that could be how Cody gets to Roman. Him and Damien have a match for the briefcase, and Cody wins the briefcase off him, and instead of Cody. Again, that again would make so much more sense that I mean, Damien be the fucking. Because at this point, it's become sort of like an, an object and less of like, oh, this is my fucking briefcase. Yeah. That I'm using a cash in on someone for a title shot. It's more like it's spent more time, like I said, in the crowd and thrown around. It bounced around the ring than it has been actually in a referee's hand. But yeah, I think uh, I think that's the best bet. You know, Cody doesn't win the rumble, um, and him and Damian Priest have a match at Chamber for the briefcase, and that's how Cody finishes his story. You know, he says, you know, after he makes the save for the walk, he says. Uh, I'm cashing this in at WrestleMania and finishing my story. Um, yeah. You know. I don't, that would be no yeah. sense. Because um, obviously I think Cody would have... That's why I, they didn't put the briefcase on him because he wasn't going to cash in for media anyway. So why have... There's no sense in having Cody carry you in a briefcase. But, you know. Again, we talked about this before, but the only reason Priest won the briefcase was because uh, him and Vince... Triple H and Vince couldn't agree... Uh, on who they wanted to win, so Damian Priest was like the best, the basically the option they could both agree, they could both agree on. So I think that's the only reason he even won the briefcase to begin with. But uh, yeah, overall though, that was a relatively strong episode of Raw. I'm gonna give Raw, um, I'm gonna probably give Raw an A plus. You know, uh, the only thing that really wasn't perfect was like the Natty, the woman's tag, and maybe like you know the. Uh, the segment with Katana Chance and stuff, but the walk segment, the main event, um, and the women's world title match were all really strong stuff that I think it just made me plus. Like, those things really don't matter, you know. Um, I kind of forgot about them, like, once the world heavyweight title match happened. So, you know, overall, I thought Wall was awesome. Also, I'm a county main event, too, and you got a couple really good matches on there, so, you know. Um, what would you, overall, what would you give Wall as a nice, nice little letter grade right there? Uh, I, I give it the same thing. I gave it like an A plus. Like minus obviously the detractor. Uh, uh, our detractors are the same. Um, but yeah, like overall, like I felt like uh, our positives were are are very much the same. Like I love that that Rhea Ripley versus Ivy Nile match. Um, the opener again. Like Becky Becky carried fucking Nia Jax to a to a good match again. Um, but yeah, like overall. Like, the show itself, the main event was awesome. Um, yeah, I, I felt like this was, a, this was a really, really good episode of Raw to kick off the year of 2024 after 2023 ended in the most fucking unbelievable way possible. Yeah, I think it just shows, you know, that WWE is uh, going to be doing some really good stuff. This was a good start at point to that. Let's get into the next uh, show that took place in 2024. We're going to do NXT New Year's Evil 2024 now. Ooh. Yeah, this is the third innovation. New Year's Eve, baby. This is the third innovation. Um of this they've done this before actually was it i think this is the first non-pay-per-view one though right no because they've done a lot of pay-per-views but i think they've done yeah this is the third one because uh the first one was like in the black and gold era and then the second one was in um 
Oh, he's at the tail end of it. Yeah, the tail end of it, and then the second one was in uh, the 2.0 era, and then the last two were in uh, like this era. So this is definitely the um, second one. Um, the non-shitty 2.0 era. Yeah. <laughs> um, More black people, less 2.0. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into this stuff. I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna do the same thing. Cover level up first until this tape the same night. We had the commentary team of. Um, Blake Howard and Byron Saxon. We had like we had three matches on this show. Uh, first one was Brooks Jensen versus Luca Cusafina. Three too many. Probably. But yeah, it was Brooks Jensen versus Luca Cusafino. Um, this was Brooks Jensen's first match um, as a singles as official, but not you know because uh, Briggs and Jensen on the team anymore. Um, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I don't love the fact they broke up the tag team, but at least they had, like, a mutual breakup versus, like, someone turned on somebody. It just sucks they kind of broke him up. Of course, this is typical Shawn Michaels. He, he, he of course, he breaks them up right before the Dusty tag. Like, they couldn't have at least been in the Dusty tag. Like, um, he's got new theme music now. It's very generic. You're probably going to hear it in a couple weeks. Uh, you're gonna, and it's a very generic theme music. And uh, his attire is all different now. Um, but, yeah... You got the trunks, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, you can definitely tell. I think he's gonna struggle a little bit more than uh, uh, Briggs, which I never thought I would say that. I always thought it'd be the other way around, but I think he would struggle a little bit more. I mean, I'm not surprised that he would struggle on his own, but at the same time, it's fucking like it's Bobby Cannon's kid. Like, like what more? Like, he's like I just feel like I feel like they're pushing. Uh, Briggs way more. So, hopefully, uh, you know, um, they can both do well. Um, they just shouldn't have even broke them up, but, you know, it's NXT. It's, it's just... It was, it's way too early. They at least should have stayed together for the Dusty Tags. That was announced. So I don't think... Oh, for sure. I don't think they want, because I know they've had it, but they weren't in it. I, I know they had it once in the 2.0. I don't think they were in it, right? Am I right on that? Or were they, uh, I don't remember if they were in it. Um, I don't think they were in it. I, I think they no more they were when they were first a tag team I think that's when they were yeah in. they at least should have they should have they should have at least uh, stayed together at least throughout the dusty tag you know and then they could say you know because obviously I don't think they were going to win it so if they didn't win it they could be like hey let's do a little thing but, uh, again Shawn Michaels yeah like this isn't working or like let's do our own uh, but again you know Shawn Michaels just can't wait to break up tag teams though so it's like you know this <laughs> the one this is technically the first one of 20... It got over organically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, um, yeah, this match was, oh, was okay. Uh, Jensen did win. He won with, like, a knee drop that completely missed. Um, I hope that, that you know, he, you can definitely tell he hasn't done that thing before, but, uh, yeah. Uh, and again, uh, you've seen Luca Crucifino before. I don't, I don't mind the gimmick. I just don't like the fact that a lawyer is a wrestler, like a lawyer, as you've seen the presentation of him, wouldn't be a wrestler, like he should be a man if he's not a wrestler. Um, this was two and a half quarter stars, it was relatively okay. Then we had Dion Lennox do an interview, um, Sarah Schreiber does the interviews now for, uh, Level Up, um, and, uh, Kelly Kincaid was moved up to NXT, um, which makes this release of Mackenzie Mitchell suck even more, because, uh, as you know, Sarah Schreiber was in our favorite interview. It's probably the worst one. So, um, I didn't even know she was still with the company until she started showing up in NXT. Like, um, I thought she got released because she did. I think she's just been doing the house shows. So, um, but yeah, uh, Dion Lennox did a promo where he talked about like you know how like he's been raised to be a good boy in life, but you know when that bell rings, you know uh, he turns a, 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 a switch flips. Uh, you can definitely tell he's new to being on the mic because uh, his delivery wasn't very great. It looked like he was going to cry during this interview. Uh, but yeah, again, I'll give him a hand of a pass because you, you can definitely tell that he's uh, very much new to doing this. Um, then we have the best tag team in all of NXT right now. Izzy Game and Tiana Jane, they face Tiana's oh, yeah. and Brindley Reese. And uh, I think you know who won this match. It was... Uh, Kiana mm. James and Izzy James. It was so predictable. It was two stars. Um, Kiana James mentioned in NXT this week that she's going to take uh, Izzy James to the top. And 
they couldn't even get a match on the show. They, the match was on level up. That's doing, you're doing real well right there. Just, oh yeah, fuck yeah, let's uh, go. There's just two stars, I, I was on my phone. Um, then we had the main event of the level up portion. Um, it was uh, Dion Lennox versus Oral Mensa. Uh, Jakala Jackson, the last legend to come to them. Norm Dahl wasn't there, I don't know where he was. Um, and uh, Shaka, Oral Mensa won. He had his interview in the corner. Dion Lennox was pretty strong, uh, but it was pretty much in no doubt that Oral Mensa Percy Watson Jr.? I mean, he pretty much is. Uh, but yeah, uh, overall, this was relatively uh, solid. I gave it two and a um, half stars. I thought they. You know, hmm. all Mets, uh, not all Mets, uh, well, he has potential too, but Dion Lennox does have some potential. He just needs to work with his skills. I think he will work on Um, but, uh, yeah, then we had the show, the actual, um, portion of it. We had the commentary team of Booker T and Vic Joseph. Um, it's 2024, let's hope Booker T can improve, uh, you know, um. What? <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping it through. Okay. Yeah, I like it. It had an intro where it just basically kind of advertised all the matches. It was a really good, like, intro. It kind of showed, like, you know, everyone was going to be a match and everything like that. Um, it kicked off with uh, NXT Women's Title Match. It was Lyle Valkyria defending against uh, Red Davenport. Um, this match was very good, you know, very back and forth. Um, eventually, uh, Blair Davenport misses a knee, which causes her to go knee first into the announcer's table. And uh, Lila Valkyria won with a uh, Michinoku driver. Um, and then that was it. The match was very good, but it was very short. It was only, uh, the full match was on YouTube. It was only like nine minutes. I think that match should have been a lot longer, especially because they built for this for a while. Um, and, you know, they were both kind of like high-ranking athletes in the division. They were just weird how short this was. Um, and then afterwards... Um, Lola Vice tries to cash in for a breakout tournament contract, but then she gets saved by uh, Tatum Paxley. And uh, obviously, uh, they end up fighting off Lola Vice and Electra Lopez. But, uh, you know, they work together, but, you know, uh, Lara Valkyrie is all creeped out by uh, uh, Tatum Paxley. I don't really know if I like the storyline with Tatum Paxley and Lyra Valkyria, but, uh, you know, overall I enjoyed, um, you know, uh, this match and this angle right here. I just thought the match would have gone a little longer. Um, and yeah, I guess for the breakout contract, you just cash it in like a new thing, which is weird. Uh, yeah. I don't think they... I think you I think can. that's a new thing, right? They didn't do that, they didn't do this before, at least with the breakout tournament, right? Um, I, don't I imagine, think so. though, that when it comes down to it, they're going to cash in for the tag titles. Um, just because I don't really see a path of Lola Vice who wins a single title right now. Um, but that may mean that I feel low plus have to win the tag title. Well, not necessarily, but... Um, um, but overall, yeah, this is all that looks good. What would you give the match as a star rating? I give it a... Uh, I give it, a, like, a two star, two and a half. Like, it was okay. Uh, post match with Tatum was weird. It was just weird. It felt very clunky. Yeah. Um, then Kelly can. I know. Then Kelly can gives an update. We basically don't get a main event uh, because of the injury that Ilya Dragunov has. He's not medically cleared to uh, take place in the main event, so it's just not happening. Um, I was very disappointed about this what? just because, uh, you know. Fucking baby. <laughs> Wrestle. <laughs> hey, he said he wanted to wrestle, but he couldn't get cleared to wrestle, so we can't we can't really yell at Ilya Dragon off here. I don't think it's his fault. Um, but yeah, uh, it wasn't my fault. Overall, I thought this was uh, kind of disappointing. I really wanted to see that Ilya Dragon off. So, kind of disappointing. Really. I was, I was pretty sad. We wouldn't get the whoop that trick. Oh, I like it today. Though. We still got that. Yeah. Overall, well, what do you think of this update? Yeah, I thought, I thought, I, I thought that was. It sucked, but it's like I don't even know why they clear like they even put the match forward in the first place. I know, yeah, it was weird. Um, then we had uh, the No Quarter Catch Crew versus LWO, and what was supposed to be Dragon Lee, but then we found out earlier in the day on X um, that uh, Dragon Lee. His visa expired, so he couldn't, and he was in Mexico, so he couldn't get back over to America. 
to be stuck in Mexico for a bit. Um, and yeah, uh, you know, um, uh, we, the, the announcement was going to be a replacement uh, tag team partner. Um, and we were wondering who this was going to be. Obviously, the biggest one we wanted was Andrade. Um, you know, because Andrade, he's a, he's a free agent now. And uh, we thought he'd be at least on one of the... We at least thought he'd be on NXT or SmackDown. And, you know, we kind of thought, what a coincidence it is that Dragon League's visa expired the same week that Andrade could have uh, open for business. Um, but it wasn't the case. It wasn't Andrade. It ended up being uh, Carlito. Um, obviously, uh, this was not planned because I don't think Carlito was meant to come back. I think we were going to save his return at least a few more weeks. But, uh, you know, I so like this. This was kind of cool because obviously Carlito, if you think about it, NXT has changed so much since he's been with the company. Like, right? if you remember, he was, the last time he was in NXT, it was game show NXT. It was like season one episode of NXT. Um, I'm pretty sure he was released during that season, too. Right? So, he was, um, I think. Well, he left doing that season, I guess. Um, but this was cool. Um, and, you know, the crowd reacted to it really well. Uh, there was no Charlie Dempsey. It was Gulak, um, Miles Bourne, and Damon Kemp, because Charlie Dempsey was, uh, which is what Zio is going to come talk about when he in about five minutes. Um, you know, um, he was uh, at, um, what's the name of the wrestling company? I knew it right before. He was, uh, he was challenging for the Triple Crown and, uh, a- oh, Japan. Japan. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So he wasn't there this week. Um, I still have to watch that match. I did be into. I do um, too. But, you know, I just haven't had a chance. It's really cool that he gets to do this just because, you know, I've, I've never, I mean, I don't know much about the guy that he's going to wrestle, but I imagine because of his style, he's going to do really well um, in that environment. And, you know, it's pretty cool because WWE is probably coming up with this. I mean, they did this last year with Nakamura when he went to pro wrestling with Noah. I think more would have happened with it had Vince not come back. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is cool. Um, overall, uh, this was a good match. Um, you know, it was pretty standard six-man tag action. Uh, but I thought uh, LWO looked good. Uh, and um, Raul Mendoza was the one that actually got the win, you know. Probably would hit the backstab, and then he tagged him in, and he hit the frog splash on... Was it Miles Bourne or Damon Kemp? I feel like it would have been one of those. Bourne, I think um, it was. I actually thought it was Damon Kemp. That's how much of a loser he is. Um, He's a fucking loser. It's probably him, though. I don't, I don't, it was I don't one of them, him. you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, LWO and Carlito won. Um, afterwards, uh, Carlito spits Apple and to do a Gulak's face. Uh, overall, this was good. I give it three stars. Um, I would like to see Gulak's group get more stronger. I feel like the role should be switched to a metaphor that's in this type of spot and Gulak's group is the one that's like tearing up the division, but uh, you know, you can't have it that way. But uh, yeah, overall, I gave it three stars. This was uh, good stuff. Cool return from Carlito here. I loved it. I loved the return of Carlito. I thought it was fucking awesome. I loved it. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, at some point, Zio was going to pop in and give his thoughts on the um, Charlie Dempsey uh, Triple Crown match. Um, I did tell him come on in five, but, uh, you know, obviously, uh, he'll come on when he comes on. Um, Which, huh? Which is never. He might never come on. He might be sleeping. Um, but yeah, then Carmella Hayes and Trick Williams get interviewed. Um... They t- I'll just break down these two segments quick. Um, they talk about how, uh, you know, they're disappointed that Trick Williams couldn't get the uh, NXT title. Uh, but, you know, Carmelo Hayes says, you know, that he, he should be okay with this because, you know, then you could be really dragging off without any asterisks around it. Um, and, uh, you know, they did, like, a little bit of a tease that they're going to break up because I think Carmelo Hayes said something that, like, kind of pissed off Trick Williams. So, overall, this was relatively good stuff. Then following this, we had a vignette for uh, Wally Osborne, where we just kind of showed him talking about like how he wants to uh, follow the path of all of the NXT greats, and he wants to win the breakout tournament. He wants to do it to JQ and everything like that. So overall, uh, that was good. I feel like he should be doing stuff on his own instead of being with JQ, but it's not so, um, Overall, I like these two segments. What do you think of these two segments? Right here? 
Um, I, I mean, they were fine. They, it's, I, I didn't mind them. Um, then we got the worst match of the night. It was uh, Ariana Grace versus Roxanne Perez. Um, pretty much Roxanne Perez destroyed her. She beat her with Bob Rocks. And then afterwards, um, Roxanne Perez failed to attack her. She walked her with a cross face. The referee couldn't pull her off. And eventually, she has, they have to send several officials out there. And um, this causes the referee to reverse his decision. So Ariana Grace came here instead. And Roxanne Perez just took her. Um, oh, here's Zero. No, oh, here he fucking is. Oh, that's a bitch ass up, little nigga. I think it's, <laughs> yeah, I think it's. Hey! Be nice! I figured we would have you come on. I figured we would have you come on now. Yep. Try to keep it brief about the uh, Charlie Dempsey um, match right. just because, uh, right. yeah. We haven't seen it yet, so we don't know who we have. Okay, well, it's self-explanatory. Who <laughs> win? You honestly think this motherfucker was just going to be tired of here? No, but um, but I would say this, right? So, Charlie. Okay, there's two. Okay, so Charlie Dempsey, right? Well, first he had a tag match with some other goon and uh. <laughs> Fujinami. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I like it. Before, so yeah, yes. So um, so uh, his tag match it was pretty good, you know. Yeah, standard. Then like um, he had another uh, a, a tag match, but like um, but, uh, but um, this time it was against Nakajima and some partner, and Charlie T and Charlie Timsey in that tag match did pin Nakajima, who was the current. Triple Crown Champion. So, day later, or two days later, the match happened between Charlie. Uh, oh yeah, the match happened between Charlie Kempsey and Nakajima for for the Triple Crown title. The match was pretty good, and what's funny is that this right. So, uh, what happened is that like um, during the match. The crowd was chanting Charlie's name cool. because, from what I saw of the, the whole match, Charlie is really impressive. Bro. He really won over the crowd. He won over the crowd in all Japan and even gained Nakajima's respect, which is fucking awesome, bro. <laughs> so like, Charlie and uh, Nakajima, the match it was pretty damn good. It's not like super hot, but it was good because the fact that he showed off his stuff. Nakajima won, <laughs> but um, but the thing is to um, get off of this is the fact that it's the fact that Charlie really did show why he is a really good wrestler, and the fact that I will say this, and I will stand by this till this day, Charlie. From what he's shown to what he gained and what he gained from it, he, he's a perfect fit for all Japan. Because the fact that he showcases stuff from the old school style, especially he showcased the um the uh, British style, because you know he wrestles just like his fucking father. I was so, saying like, who trained him. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like he wrestles like he's in fucking the uh, UK back in the day, like in World of Sport. So, so I would say this: Dempsey has a fucking yes, future, he does. and I want him to like. This is just me, okay? I want him to get out of the shell, can wrestle like all over the world, because that's when we want to see how he really goes. Because some people have been saying the moment he went to all Japan, he got the show to get the feel of what real wrestling is. <laughs> because the thing is, is that he, the stuff um, that his dad taught him. Yes, he could actually showcase what he learned and what he learned against the Triple Crown champion gained the Triple Crown champion's respect. So I want, to, so I want 
to see more of that um I, I want to see more of that um side of him because the fact that he could do that hold his own against a fucking murder machine <laughs> is great i agree and got the respect from him fuck yeah i want him to do more of the excursion shit okay the fact that triple h shipped his ass over there i want to see him getting shipped to other That'd places be awesome. it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be in uh, Japan all the time. It can even be in the UK. Progress. Ref Pro. Because this man, I hope he... <laughs> Forgive me, Cody Rose, but he has to finish the story. <laughs> and when... Not forgiven. <laughs> That's Cody Rose. <laughs> yeah. No. Dempsey has to finish the story and win the king of the ring and win the world title something his dad never did which is winning the world yep. title finish the story dempsey <laughs> fuck you cody <laughs> you loser <laughs> uh, hey yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck you loser. uh yeah how hey. you get big league by the rock nigga hey relax how you get big league, you get big league um <laughs> by the rock bro he might steal your spot he might do something about it, Cody. Uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah. he will. Listen, thank you for giving us. <laughs> thank you for giving us. Uh... Hey, be nice, okay? He's going through a tough time. <laughs> thank you for giving us those uh, <laughs> thoughts. Uh, before you get off, you, you can right. just spark uh, tomorrow, correct? Yeah, I'm gonna just write probably, uh, prob probably good. Probably you better clock. Man, you know what? Stomp your ass out, bro. You better chill out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> One o'clock. <laughs> fucking curve something. <laughs> yeah, right, sure. I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs> fucking whoops. Alright, so let's get back to. But it's good to hear that you know. Well, definitely gonna try to watch that match. Just we've been really busy, so we haven't been able to watch it yet. So it was cool that you know we got to have someone give their thoughts on it. I mean, it's not that I haven't wanted to watch it. It's just life. Life's been busy, so. Um. But yeah, let's. Life's been light. Uh, again, Roxanne Perez just destroyed um, Ariana Grace post match with a ref reverse the decision. Uh, and then yeah, that was pretty much it. It looks like you know Roxanne Perez is going on a darker path. I didn't like this at all. I give the match. I fucking hated I give this it. This match two stars. Um, I don't like reverse finishes because I think they're really stupid. Um, you know, once the match is over, I think you know. Uh, the, that, the results stay the way that it is. Um, it's just really stupid how they always do. Yeah, reversals are dumb. I hate them. They're yeah. the worst. And, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a... Well, it's a, there's a storyline, which this isn't doing, yeah. so... Uh, there's no reason for Roxanne Perez to go heal, but unfortunately, they don't have a choice but to turn her heel because they bungle her baby. Her, her turn and heel is the only thing that they can... Completely bungled it. The only thing that really could save a baby face at this point is she went to the main wall have like a new snow like so, uh, yeah this is uh she's clearly what's probably gonna happen is that saint valentine's day or uh, whatever the name of that piece of show is um she's probably gonna help poor jade win the belt and they're gonna be a team and they're both gonna be teams. overall what did you think of this man terrible um not the Roxanne part, but the, the part that they feel like that she needs to go heal for some reason. Um, I never quite understood it. Like, take your most popular woman's wrestler and then go, eh, she needs a character change even though she doesn't. Um, it's, it's beyond stupid. Yeah. Then Ava gets interviewed. Um, talked about how the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic is uh, coming back, which is I'm pretty excited about. Um, and we're going to find out the teams are going to be in it next week. And then, uh, what teams do they have to even put in it? Like, the Creed Brothers went to the main roster. They broke up the Bridge and Jensen. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, they don't really have a lot of options there. Um, but, uh... Uh, Bay uh, and Blade... They got four stem down our throats again. Yeah, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. I mean, they are throwing some teams together, um, but, you know, they don't really have a lot of teams. Um, 
Um, no, they don't. You know, and that's Shawn Michaels. <laughs> that's because Shawn Michaels is just so quick to break up. Chase you, baby. That's what they and love to have, do. Uh, and then she talks about, you know, how she's going to be more involved in the manager side of things, the GM role, uh, after her conversation with Paul Heyman a few months ago. Uh, we didn't really find out anything more about this because this is going to bring in a lot of new ideas. You know, I essentially I think maybe if you fucking pay attention, you'd be able to hear it. Yes, so. But overall, what did you think of this interview? I thought it was kind of just. I just thought I just thought there was too much talk. Fucking filler. And then Blair Davenport's backstage, and Nikita Lyons comes up and makes fun of the fact that she lost. And, you know, Blair Davenport's mad that you know. Nikita Lyons didn't take the opportunity to jump her like she did. Her. But Nikita Lyons says that she wants to do it face to face. And she doesn't really, she's not really unsuccessful. They get into a, like she said she doesn't want to attack her when she's injured, but then proceeds to attack her anyway. It's like, what are you doing? Like, the second was bad. The second was, <laughs> what a fucking liar. The second was not good. This is bad. What do you think of this? Terrible. <laughs> What's going on here? Because Nikita's awful. But I don't think anyone fucking cares about her wrestling ability besides me, so... Well, I do. She's garbage. Um, then we had the, uh... Ranch Hand or Serbit match. It was Tiffany Stratton versus, uh, Fallon Henley. Good stuff, you know, putting back and forth. Uh, Tiffany Stratton tried to cheat by using a weapon, but the ref took it away from her. It caused, uh, Fallon Henley to hit the, uh... Shining Wizard for the win. Which means that, uh... Tiffany Stratton, for like a day, has to be a Ranch um, once I kind of found out it was a day, I kind of figured that Tiffy Stratton was going to win. I thought it was going to be longer than that. I thought it really was a fucking yeah, like, day. Like, like big what? The fuck can they do in a day? <laughs> I don't, you know what's all, all that's going to happen is there's just going to be a segment next week where like Tiff Fallon Henley puts her to work and that's all that's going to happen. I thought they would have done something. Like they could do something with this and you know, I bet like, I don't know. I feel like once you found out, it was pretty obvious that Fallon Henley was winning this match. Um, I don't understand like why she has to fulfill, fulfill the stipulation. Like, they didn't say she has to fulfill the stipulation. Like if they didn't say like you're fired if you don't fulfill the stipulation, but whatever. It, it didn't even seem like it was a day because if you remember, they like immediate, immediately she like become to a ranch hand. Like so, is that it? Is it just that night? Like what's going on here? Like this. Is... Like what is what is going on? Um, this was this match was good. I give it three stars, but the stipulation is just kind of a waste. Like I felt like I felt like that. Like one day, like oh, big whoop. Yeah, for a fucking day, it's a yeah, waste. Like it should have been like it should have been like a month, all up until like Saint Valentine's Day Massacre, whatever the name of that. Page. Dude, what a waste of time. Like, what are you gonna go do, Phil? Like, like, yeah, you, you, you knew once once they said it was a day, you knew Fallon Henley was winning. Like it was just such a waste of time. Oh yeah. What do you think of this? This was just. Awful. Did you give it as like a style lead? Two. Did you give, did you give the honor of race box as a style lead? Uh, one. Then, this was awesome. Braun Break was backstage, and Barry Corbin comes up to him and wants them to team up with the Dusty Road and the Dusty Road. He goes to Braun doesn't want to, but eventually he's able to change. Pause a segment for yourself because really they're just putting each other down and then they eventually just like we just keep up. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense, but they're the like, you think of this, you lost it. I loved it. It was so um, funny. Then all the family has been said that it's really cool. And then you can go into that Femi's cool, I guess, and then uh, Cora Jade is, is about as useless as they come. Um, then we had, uh, this was weird, a witch call an exclusive interview where, like, he talks about pretty much, like, anytime he gets a something bad on the you know, um, the time that uh, he got into doing the black and gold and and then they can, like, he just moved his, uh, his wife of the
Oh, she is. It's like I'm trying to figure it out. Like, uh, but yeah, but I'm, but yeah, while I do that, also back then, talking about how like, uh, you know, she's pregnant um, with this twin, with this twin and everything like that. Uh, and mentions the fact, you know, uh, that, you know, Baby. Um, and then he mentioned, you know, uh, that he had a big, 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 In the screen. It's so weird though, but uh, yeah, I like this, you know, I kind of like that they're trying to make something out of the fact that he's had all this bad luck, but it's just kind of weird, because you know, I know wrestling's a work, but like, when you watch the show, you make it think that it's real, and it's like, um, so like, are they actually not trying to hurt each other, type of thing? Like, the old the dragon. Oh, is he hurting people yeah, on purpose? Like, I don't understand that. Um, again, too, I feel like too, uh, I, we didn't get to talk about that man, but they shouldn't have done the injury with Dragon off because that kind of made him look weak too. And like people didn't even know it was an angle until uh, uh But you know, they actually was taking Point of putting a minute, and then you found out the guy that he took out was like there anyway. Like, why the hell was he yeah, uh, overall, like if we just look at this, like we look at this, like, it was fine, but I give it like a little more. A hundred percent agree to the like. Um, we can get this match like a thousand. Uh, okay. oh. Yeah. Breaking up everything, so it's 
not going to put the effort into it. I'm not going to put the effort into it. And I literally didn't even care.
Uh, I didn't think it was going to be on the right end. Uh, it seems like it was going to be Kevin Owens just based on the fact that, like, he's been appearing at NXT a ton recently, and it's really awesome to see him in NXT. So. And, um, yeah, so we have to have a really good NXT with, uh, Ray Cesaro, uh, Southside, the What a shitty friend. and how they played into it and everything like that. I like the main event. Kevin Owens coming back was awesome. Um, but yeah, like I feel like this is gonna, they're going to turn this into a... Uh, it's going to eventually Carmelo's going heel. Like, let's, let's be honest. Carmelo's going to go heel. It's going to be awful. We're going to all hate it. Yeah, we'll see. And that was NXT. You know, I was kind of actually thinking, like, oh, all the shows are banned this week. But kind of reviewing NXT, uh, it's pretty average. I'm going to give it, like, a C, mainly for the... Kevin Owens bit and the NXT breakout match, but I don't know what happened. And NXT's been kind of a killer lately, and it kind of felt like Shawn Michaels had kind of had his fingertips all over this one. I don't know what was going on here. What do you think of NXT? I thought it was kind of okay. I gave it like a C. Um, I give it like I give it like a C, C plus. Um, yeah, the main event, Kevin Owens being there was awesome. Yeah, it was just a. It just felt like a weird episode of NXT. Maybe because I had my ex. <clears throat> and I kind of expected this episode to be a banner too, because you know, I, I, but. Yeah. Because uh, it was a yeah, pay-per-view. So. Free TV pay-per-view, essentially. And they took off the title match for no reason. So. A couple of other notes to break down. We did have an b- episode of The Bump this week. What- oh, my God. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass up.
cheese. Oh my god, is this coke from Burger King? Oh, what is that? Hey, that would be a good one. Stop posting about baller. I'm tired of seeing it. My friends on TikTok send me baller. On Discord, it's fucking baller. I was in studio origami, right? And all the channels were just baller. Yeah, here. then Smack, so Sm this was the New Year's Revolution episode of SmackDown. They haven't done New Year's Revolution since uh, 2007 as a concept at all, so it's pretty cool that they brought it back. Um, yeah, I liked it. Um, we had the commentary team of course. Yeah, cool. I hope they bring it back next year like they do this. They obviously probably can't bring back, well, they actually could bring back day one. They could just make it part of the next team, but, you know, they, they really wanted to kick off 2024 with a bane, and I think... Raw did, NXT not so much, and then, uh, you know, SmackDown was we'll probably about. Um, new change to the commentary team, no more Michael Cole, it's just Corey Graves and, uh, Kevin Patrick now. Um, you know, I think that's fine. I don't really think there was a need for Michael Cole to be on those shows. I think he's done everything he, he can do to gear up, uh, Kevin Patrick. I think it's time for him to, you know, do it on his own now. Um, and yeah, I think he did fairly well on commentary. Um... Overall, how did you? I'm, I mean, it's the same people. We've heard these two together on commentary. Like, like first night without Michael Cole, how do you think uh, Kevin Patrick? Good. He did good. Um, it's a good man. Um, He's a good man. And then Roman Reigns returns for like the three thousandth time in his title reign. Um, yeah. Um, even though it. It's a lot of times. I mean, there's a lot of there's a, there's a meme out there that will just show like all of his returns that's been announced where it just shows like several returns but uh yeah the bloodline pull up minus jimmy i don't know what he was um and jim Braxton tried to interview roman reigns she wanted a reaction to uh you know um what what the rock said about roman and roman just laughed it off and paul Heyman just laughed it off so i did like that he laughed it off though he shows that you know he he uh that the building, that the tease in the match, but you know, it shows that it that it's there. So I like that. Overall, uh, how'd you feel about this segment? I thought it was awesome. I like this. I thought it was awesome too. He better not laugh though, because I'll rock my head. Yeah, he might. Um. With a punch. Then uh, we had the foot. And a few. We'll oh. see. Then we had a uh, United States Championship uh, tournament finals match, number one contenders. Uh, it was Kevin Owens versus Santos Escobar with. Uh, Angel and Umberto inside. Before the match, um, Logan Paul comes out to do commentary. And before the match actually starts, uh, Wal Mendoza and Joaquin Wild attack Angel and Umberto and they blow them to the back. And this threw off Santos' game, where, uh, you know, they had a. Yeah, because they couldn't Yeah, cheat. so, you know, they couldn't do their game plan. So, uh, the match was still, like, really good, though. They still gave uh, Santos a lot of offense. Eventually, uh, Kevin Owens won with the stunner. Uh, Logan Paul was really great on commentary, and the crowd was hating him because they were in Vancouver, uh, Canada. And obviously, they were going to hate Logan Paul because Kevin Owens, even though he's not from Vancouver, but he's from like the Canada area. So, uh, you know, he was getting more of a reaction here. And afterwards, uh, Logan Paul talked shit to Kevin Owens, and Kevin Owens knocked him out with his pass. Uh, I like this match a lot. I the match was... Uh, very good. I give it three and three quarter stars. And I like the angle. You know, I think it makes the most sense to do KO versus uh, Logan Paul. And you know, 
Santos was never gonna win this because he's too much of a heel to go up against Logan Paul. But I thought they protected him in defeat because they made it look like, you know, that he lost because he was thrown off his game because, you know, he had a game plan and he couldn't actually get the game. So overall, uh, I enjoyed this. And, you know, I thought the, I thought the right result happened. So, uh, how did you feel about this match right here? And, uh, what happened to Santos? And everything? I loved it. Uh, I thought this... I thought this was great. I thought Logan was great. Um, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I felt like Santos got thrown off his game, um, which is a heel thing that happened happened to heels and their backup gets taken away. Um, and Kevin Owens legitimately popped Logan in the face. They yeah, it was awesome. Better. It has because he was wearing a cast too, so it's like yeah, it was awesome. He did. He popped him. He showed on social media like his fucking whole side of his face was like red and bruised um, and then logan paul's backstage is wearing an ice pack um kathy kelly tries to get a word with uh logan paul she ain't getting shit um, out of him but uh austin theory and grayson waller come up and yell at her for it because like the guy just got punched in the face and you're trying to like you know be a leech and interview him and everything like that and uh they basically go and they basically Baby. go and they talk about kind of like a game plan of what they're going to do about Kevin Owens. So, uh, you know, this is good stuff. And then afterwards, Cameron Grimes comes up to make fun of him. And uh, before they can really get into a brawl or anything like that, Petey Williams has to come out there and, like, uh, you know, kind of break it up. So, uh, yeah, good on Petey to, you know, break it up the fights, you know, so. You go, Pete Williams. How do you feel about this? I, I liked this a lot. I liked it. Uh, I thought it was really good. Um, I like how they kind of... I guess they're using Cameron Grimes in a way to, like, be on Kevin's side. I like that. He's totally, that. uh, gonna be, like, the fall guy and, like, the guy that gets beaten down out of that. Like, you know, like, you know, Cameron Grimes, they do shit. It's not happening. Um, then, um, we had the, uh, almighty New Year's resolutions. Um, Bobby Lashley talks about, like, how he didn't really have a very good 2023, even though, like, he won matches and everything like that. It didn't really result into any championships or anything like that. And, you know, the Street Profits kind of agree, so they say that New Year's resolutions is to uh, win gold this year and to be the most dominant force in WWE. Um, and then uh, the lights go out, and this, like, video plays of Karrion Cross and Scarlett. Uh, kind of showing, you know, it's been it's been the vignettes that's been playing the past few weeks, um, and Scarlett and Karrion Cross come out, and they have like a little bit of a face off with them, and who returns? None other than uh, Paul Ellerin, first I think was shown, and then the Authors of Pain return. They've been signed for a while though, right? Authors of Pain. This, this is like um, yeah, quite a while. They beat up. Uh, well, they attack Lashley, send him to the floor, and this allows Karrion Cross to, like, beat him up some more. And AOP hit the, uh, Super Collider on the Street Profits, while Karrion Cross uh, locks him into, the, like, the straight jacket submission move. And afterwards, they kind of leave together. Um, I like the segment a lot. Um, you can definitely tell Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits are definitely in babyface mode now. Um, it's oh, yeah. kind of weird, because... It was like the big turn that happened, but I think they were just so popular that they really couldn't keep them healed. I can't really picture like the exact time they turned babyface. If I had to say the exact time, I definitely think it was the tribute to the troop show. Um, but I think they were definitely a babyface a little bit before that. I think uh, they were definitely babyface when they faced Judgment Day for the tag titles, like right before Survivor Series. Oh, 100%, um, yeah. I don't mind the change, but it just, you know. Because, you know, that is a. It is. It's better yeah, than what they were doing. I like this. Um, I like the return of Karrion Cross and AOP here. I hope this can kind of turn Karrion Cross's career around finally and finally get him doing something. Um, and you know, this could be something that they do for a while. Um, it does make sense for him to go after Bobby Lashley because you know he, Bobby Lashley made him look like a fool when uh, he fought for the um, and he fought him in the U.S. title tournament and everything like that. So I like this. Um, they kind of booked themselves a little bit into a corner because uh, they both need to win this feud. Um, it's I, I I guess I think Karrion Cross and AOP need to win this feud more just because Karrion Cross really needs to get something going. I think Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits will be fine if they lose this feud. Um, but overall, I really like this return here and everything like that. Um, and what a difference too! Remember when 
the AOP got caught up before. Paul Allen wasn't, they thought he was too old to travel. What a difference uh, time makes. He's allowed to travel all of a sudden now. Like, how weird is that? Uh, but yeah. what did you think of this uh, segment and the return of uh, the AOP and Bobby Lassie and the Street Profits being baby faces? I like it. Um, makes a lot of sense. Uh, they fit better as baby faces, I think. Um, but yeah, it's I, I like it. Um, then we had Mia Yim versus Io Sky for the women's championship. Um, Gallows and Anderson accompanied Mia Yim just to her entrance, and then they just go backstage, and then Damage Control do the same thing. Uh, I think Gallows and Anderson's day. Yeah. I think Gallows and Anderson stays in WWE a number. I hate to say that, but I just don't. I feel like they're getting released this year just because uh, they don't do anything. Um, and you know, now that AJ's not with them anymore, their value's kind of different. So I don't want them to get released, but I think they're getting released this year. Um, it seems like you want to get released. <laughs> I don't want it to happen, but it's like, you know, they don't use the. No, oh, please release them! <laughs> You're begging for the release. Uh, yeah, this is a really good, um, actually a great women's championship match right here. Very back and forth. Eventually, Io Sky wins with the moonsault onto uh, Mia Yim. I like that she won clean too. You know, uh, kind of shows that she can get it done on her own type of thing. Um, and yeah, it's just really great stuff. I give it four stars, and like, well, it was just great stuff. How do you feel about this? I thought this match was great. I don't think that uh, the Good Brothers days in WWE numbered. I think they still um, have a long way to go. The one thing they can do to save their career is uh, to do an AJ Styles like Carl Anderson. Because, you know, they cut, AJ kind of shunned them a little bit when uh, he came back. And like that. So that's the one thing that they can do to kind of save their career type of thing. They haven't killed. I don't think they. Styles and Anderson, I don't think they've ever had a match with each other. Too, so, um, like. I don't yeah, think so either. Because I think right when it, because I think right when, because uh, I know AJ was kicked out of Bullet Club when he originally signed a contract at WWE, but I'm pretty sure Gallows and Anderson also were kicked out of Bullet Club. The original Bullet Club, anyways, like originally. So I'm pretty sure uh, they never had a match, so they have to have a match. Um, next, Paul Heyman backstage, and he cuts a great promo. Basically talking about how like anybody tries to make themselves relevant by mentioning Roman Reigns, and um, he mentioned you know that uh, Roman Reigns is gonna put down uh, whoever wins the main event tonight. So uh, yeah, that was good stuff. And then uh, Eo Sky's backstage, Damage Control come up and celebrate the fact that you know she's still the women's champion. Um, and uh, they talk about how they're gonna dominate 2024. And Bianca Belair comes up and announces her entrance into the Royal Rumble, and then. Um, uh, Dakota Kai um, interprets for EO Sky and tells Bailey that she needs to take care of uh, Bianca Belair, so that turned into a match for next week. I'm sick of seeing Bailey versus uh, Bianca Belair. It seems like we see that match every month. So, uh, yeah. Overall, uh, I like these segments. How'd you feel about them? Um, they were okay. Nothing special. Um, and then we had Pretty Deadly versus uh, Pete Dunne and a mystery partner. And the mystery partner ended up being Tyler Bates. Uh, this was awesome. Uh, it's, a, it's officially his call-up for the main roster. He's been on the main roster before, but, you know, the, he, it, it, it didn't last very long. Um, actually, has he ever actually... Has he actually competed ever on the main roster? Because uh, I don't think he has. I don't... Mm. Cause I'm I, not sure I, if he I has. Rest, cause I, I remember him wrestling like in 205 Live, but I don't think that was main roster. I think that was like, you know. No, that like, definitely wasn't main roster. I'm talking about yeah. the version like, you know, where Vince was running the 205 Live. I think that was meant to be main roster. No, he wasn't there. That was, he was, he was in yeah. UK still. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, it is officially his call up. You know, this is cool because obviously this is kind of a little bit of a British strong style reunion. Um, what's cool about this too is they weren't even the tag team, so I don't even think they're really. I think they've teamed up before, obviously, but I don't think they've. Uh... Well, they have on the Indies, yeah, the UK um, Independence team. Well, yeah, this was uh, this was really good. Um, eventually, uh, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne win. Um, and yeah, it looks like they're gonna be the team now, which I like. Um, I hope this leads to Pete Dunne getting his name back. You know, uh, 
I would like that, but it doesn't seem like, you know, it, no, of course. it doesn't seem like it's going that direction. But this match was very good. I give it three and three quarter stars, and I love the debut of Tyler Bates. What do you think of this? I thought the debut of uh, Tyler Bate was awesome. Uh, but I love it even more now that he's Butch. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, what do you give this as a star rating? Uh, two. What did you give the women's title match? You didn't give that a star rating. Three. Did you give the US title tournament a star rating? I feel like you're just throwing numbers out there. Like, you're just being like, eh, what? yeah, we'll just go for it. Eh. And yeah, one, two, three, four. Hey, at least you're not. Le no, no, you can't break then. the scale. This isn't. This isn't the rest of the but You can't break the scale. You, you gotta stay at the same level. No breaking the first scale. The scale gotta stay together. You can't break the scale. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve star math. What would that look like? Um, but yeah. CM Punk, Cody Rhodes, and I want to sell. I feel like you'd like that just because you like them both. Like. Oh, yeah. Um, then we had the... No, we didn't have the main event. There was one more segment before this. Nick Otis is back... Ooh, one more segment! <laughs> Nick Otis is backstage, and Ashanti the Adonis comes in. And, uh, you know, he wants to know what Nick Otis has planned for him. He doesn't want Nick... You know, he, has, he feels like he's kind of lost in the shuffle, but he doesn't want Nick Otis to uh, feel bad for him. And Nick Otis says that he's got plans for him. So, we don't know what those plans are, but he's got plans for him. Uh, we're starting to see what's going on with Ashanti the Adonis. It seems like they're splitting up uh, him and B-Fab. It seems like B-Fab's going to join Bobby Lashley's faction. Um, and it seems like uh, Johnny the Adonis is just going to do his own thing. So it'll be to see what he does. What did you think of this segment right here? I'm kind of really interested to see what he has to offer. Yeah, let's see, what he, let's see what he has to offer. What do you think he has to offer? Like a dollar? <laughs> hey, it's better... Uh, now, does he have... Are you just saying a dollar because you don't want to say he has a penny to offer because you don't like pennies? Is that why you're saying a dollar? Horrified. <laughs> I feel like too if someone like if you once you hear change in someone's pocket, you like run away from him. You like just don't want to be around. Like, who the fuck wants change? <laughs> if something's two dollar, if something's a dollar and ninety, a dollar and ninety nine cents, I'm giving you fucking two dollars. <laughs> I'm giving you more money than you want. <laughs> um, I remember too when they were trying to give you a change, you would just look at that change like in disgust. Like you would like, you would like, you would like look at me and take that change too. Like get that out of here. Like get that fucking shit away from me. <laughs> what do you do if your dad tries to give you change when he pays you and stuff? Like you just like, I don't want that. Just say no change. I don't. I don't <laughs> accept change. <laughs> what if you? Uh, what if you have to be a cashier at like a restaurant or something? You know. Oh, believe me, I've had to do that before, and I didn't know what that account. <laughs> so you just look at the change and be like, "Don't give me that. It's fine. Like, do, do, get that out of here." Yeah, just yeah, just don't give me the change. I'll give you, I'll give you two old dollar bills. <laughs> um, let's get to the main event though. We only covered the show, so you could stay right here. Um, the main. Oh, I gotta, gotta go. <laughs> it's not the show, so you could stay here. Um. It was a triple threat match between Randy Orton and AJ Styles and LA Knight where the winner was going to earn an undisputed uh, championship match at the Royal Rumble. Um, I like this a lot. The edge just took up like a whole break. Did you notice that? Like, it, I just thought that was funny. Like, you could kind of tell. You could kind of. Let's go. You they need tell to. It was going that way. Like, I was like, oh, these edges are going on. I, I don't think. I don't. I don't. I think that. I think that we're going to come out of a break. You, you could just tell it was going that way by the energy of like the edges. I mean, you're thinking, how does edi how do edges have energy? Like, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, 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 you know what's going on. So, um, but yeah, this is a great main event right here. I thought it was uh, awesome. Um, very back and forth. You could definitely tell Styles was kind of like the heel in this match, but he's kind of a trainer right now. But out of everyone in this match, he was acting the most heelish. And eventually, uh, the Bloodline come out and beat up. Everybody pretty much just destroy him. Um, and uh, doing this, uh, Nick Otis goes over to Paul Heyman and tells Ro um, Paul Heyman that Roman Reigns has earned himself a fatal four way match at the Royal Rumble. And uh, Paul, Paul Fuck Heyman's yeah. not happy about this. Roman doesn't know about this, but there was a video online where like it showed his reaction to this, where he told Paul Heyman to fix it. So I wonder how he's going to fix that. So 
the end of this year. He's uh, not. But yeah, uh, I thought the main event was great. I gave it four and a quarter stars. I obviously didn't like the fitness very much, because how the hell do you have a non-finish and a triple threat match where there's supposed to be no DQ and all that kind of stuff? I feel like instead they should have done like a six man or something like that. Um, and then they got the title shot or something just because like it was kind of stupid how we got here. I've, I read online the reason that they're doing a four way is they don't want Randy Orton to take a pin. Um, so that's why they're doing a four way. But to be honest. Just eat the pin. Eat but it. to be honest, I don't mind the four way because everyone that's facing Roman Reigns deserves a title match right now. But they just don't. Obviously, this is wishful thinking. Roman's losing the title at WrestleMania. We can't really fit all these title matches in. So, uh, you know, I think a four-way is good. It also makes the match a little more unpredictable because uh, Roman could lose the match without being pinned or anything like that. So it does add some uh, spontaneity to uh, the title match. So I like that. I just wish we kind of could have got here in a better way. So, uh, and, you know, it's a typical heel thing that WWE does. The heel will try to beat up their opponents that are having a match with each other. They're like, oh, now I don't got to have a title match now and uh they'll be like oh just kidding you gotta face all of them now so it's like you know just kidding gotta face all of them now fuck you um so you know it's the typical wrestling trope um so uh you know i still gave the match like four and a quarter stars because it was still great stuff but i didn't like the thing overall uh how did you feel about uh this little main event i loved it i loved the fences of fatal four-way i can't wait for it there you go um, and yeah, that's SmackDown. I thought SmackDown was great. I'm going to give it a B plus. Uh, just a great show right there. Um, just great stuff. I can feel about SmackDown. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought SmackDown was really good. Again, the two out of the three shows are really good. There you go. Um... Going through, let's go. Let's do like a little bit of a breakdown of what's coming up uh, this week. Uh, Raw's already happened, but huh? let's Gotta not. Gotta do it. It's part of the show. Um, we have it. Raw's looking exciting tonight. Uh, CM Punk's gonna make his first appearance since signing over to Raw, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. Um, what else is it? Uh, Johnny Gargano? No, it's Tommaso Ciampa gonna face uh, Finn Balor. That will be a banner. Um, I'm looking forward to that. What else is on tap for Raw tonight? Where is my okay. Um, we're, we're gonna have Cody Rhodes versus Shinsuke Nakamura. That's gonna be exciting. Uh, we're gonna have a women's tag team title match between uh, Katana Chance and Casey Catanzaro. Um, no, that's the same person. Kaden Kodo and Katana Chance defending the women's tag team titles against uh, Piper Niven and uh, Chelsea Green. Um, and then we have The Miz versus J.D. McDonough, and we're going to have Kofi Kinston versus uh, Marcel Bartel. Raw is looking really exciting tonight. I'm looking forward to it. Are you looking forward to Raw? I could not care less about it. Fuck yeah, I'm excited. Are you kidding me? Let's go. Let's hope you can watch the segment you want to watch. Um, yeah. And then for NXT, we're going to have uh, the first couple matches in the, um, in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. We're going to have, um, I think Core Jade's facing um, Gigi Dolan, but don't call me on that. I don't, that's, I don't think that's happening, but I'm pretty... I'll um, quote you. Yeah, don't call me on that. You can quote <laughs> And then we're going to have the NXT Tag Team title match. It's going to be the family defending against Alpha Mud. That going to be very good. So, um, that's going to um, suck. And then for SmackDown, uh, we have a few excited things on SmackDown. We have uh, Bianca Belair versus... Uh, Bailey, and we're gonna have Cameron Grimes versus, I believe it's Grayson Waller. Um, and yeah, SmackDown's looking pretty. I think SmackDown will be better than it's being advertised, so you know, uh, you know, it could still be good stuff. So overall, you excited for the week of uh, WWE programming? Fuck yeah. Uh, a couple of news things to break down. There's a lot, uh, a lot of news has gone down recently. Um, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, WWE had the holiday tour, and uh, they did really well on the holiday tour. It was like the best holiday tour, like ticket sale wise and everything like that, that's ever taken place. Obviously, uh, they did the best one was the MSG one because that's where CM Punk had his first match in WWE um, in nine years, I think it would have been. Um, yeah, that's awesome. 
Um, you know, it's good to see that business is booming for uh, WWE there, because typically the holiday tours don't typically do that well, just because it's the holidays and stuff, and nobody really you know, wants to go out and do anything. Like the holidays. So, good to see that the holiday tour did well. So how do you feel about that? I love it. It's amazing. What an incredible yeah. tour. Um, there it, the, uh, the good thing about social media now is WWE, I don't know if you watch any of them, but WWE posts like clips on their Instagram page like of the tour and everything like that. Which is cool. um, other things that's newsworthy. Um, this is actually really big. Kevin Dunn is uh, no longer in WWE. He left. When did he leave? Did he leave the 30th or 31st? It was like towards the end of the year. It was something like that, yeah. It was, uh... It had been speculated for a long yeah, time. obviously this was... I feel like this was a matter of time this was going to happen. Um, they didn't have, like, a bad... Yeah, they didn't, have, they didn't have a bad part in other ways. They did have miscommunication, but it's not like, you know, they had, like, a big fight about it or anything like that. It was, it was pretty neutral. Um, obviously, I'm kind of happy about this because he was pretty out of touch. Like, he was just as bad as Vince was. And, uh, you know... But, you know, he didn't contribute a lot to the business. He's been there, what, since the Hogan era, pretty much? Um, so he had been there a long time. Yeah, Yeah, so 80s. he had been there a long time, but, uh, you know, he was kind of out of touch also. So uh, do we know who's going to, like, take his role yet or anything like that? Or is that still TBD? Because I haven't been able to keep up with him. Uh, I think it's still okay. TBD. But, you know, uh, I don't think we're going to see, like, an immediate change in the presentation of the product. But I think uh, by, like, probably, like... Less jumpy yeah, camera cuts. So, you know, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who takes his role, but uh, how do you feel about Kevin Dunn not being around anymore? Hilarious. It, it was a long time yeah. coming. Um, then we have some uh, um, other news. Camille, uh, former NWA Women's World Champion, uh, looks like to have signed with WWE. Uh, it was reported that she was at the Performance Center recently and everything like that. Uh, I figured this was going to happen. I always kind of thought it was going to fit the WWE mode better than uh, AEW mode. I think she probably could have done fairly well in Impact. Um, but I think, you know, her being in WWE makes the most sense. Especially because now that Nick Aldis is there. I know you didn't watch a lot of NWA like towards the end, but she worked a lot with Nick Aldis. So I think Nick Aldis was a big part of probably getting Camille signed to WWE and everything like that. If it is true, but I did hear that she was at the performance. It's looked like, like she signed with WWE. Um, I'm excited about this. I think she could do really well in WWE. I think, uh, you know, she could do really well in that system. The NWA screwed now. That's like the last big name that the NWA had. They just screwed. I mean, they were screwed when uh, they lost their TV deal. But, uh, yeah, now they're even more screwed. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Camille does in WWE. There's a lot of good matches she can have. Um... I don't know if she's going to go right to the main roster like Jade Cargill will or if she'll go to NXT first just because, you know, um, even though Jade has less experience, I think uh, the thing with Camille is she didn't really, she did a lot of matches, but she doesn't really know how to work the style that the WWE has just because uh, she did like the NWA style, so it's like different. Um, so like, I don't know. It'll be tough, but I think Camille will be uh, a good asset to have for WWE. So how do you feel about have you even have you ever really seen any of Camille's work? Because I know she was kind of towards like, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, but how do you feel about Camille? Pop, the potential of her going to WWE and everything. It's yeah. big. It's really big. I love um, it. They're in signing mode yeah. now, so uh, WWE. looks like Julia's definitely going there because she just disbanded a faction recently um, in New Japan or whatever it is. Stardom. Um, and it's looking like she's going to WWE. Uh, she's gonna have to drop the Strong Women's title. Uh, well, she could just vacate it, because I think she's still that champion. Um, but yeah, how do you feel? I mean, we talked about this before, but uh, yeah, how do you feel about Julia? Do you think it's looking like she's going there, or do you think uh, it's not happening? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I think she'd be a, she's gonna be a huge get for WWE. Yeah, you, yeah. That's three big woman signings, by the way, in the span of three months. Jay Cargill, uh, Camille, and Julia, you know, maybe her, maybe this will fix the problems that you just talked about with uh, women's division. So uh, that's good. Um, other news, um, I want to make sure I get it all. Um, 
I know this isn't we. This isn't like within this week, but I want to make sure the reason Walter's not on TV right now is because uh, him and Gi him and Ginny just uh, had their first child. You know, Walter is gonna be gone probably till the Rumble, right? I imagine, or like go home week, he'll probably be back. I would um, think so, yeah. You know, it makes sense for him to be gone anyways because there's not really a lot for him to do right now with the title. Uh, but you know, uh, I'm cool. You know, obviously he's gotta take his time to see his son. You know. Slash daughters. I don't know the gender, but uh, oh, okay. it's a son. Uh, but how do you feel about that? You know that that that. that? And it was very quiet too because we didn't see like you know it was kind of, it kind of came out of nowhere because we didn't see any like post that like Jenny was even pregnant or anything like that. So that was kind of out of nowhere. What do you think? Of, what do you think about this? It was it was it came out left field. I just like I I loaded up Instagram and it was like oh Jenny. And Gunther had given birth, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "I didn't even know yeah. she was pregnant." But that's a uh, I mean, pretty cool. That's awesome. I get to spend time with this kid. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, you have some bad news. You you know more about this one than I do. The what Cal Rodriguez news? We talked about this recently. Do you want to kind of talk about what's going on now? Uh, it seems like she's healing well, but uh, she had some sort of like um, immune thing going on with her where it was like she was just allergic to fucking everything and she posted a video on her instagram of like of what it was it was just awful it was really just awful and it looks like she's getting the right medication because it's it's starting to like uh go away yeah so, so. that's good at least um yeah we'll just have to wait and see what happens with that you know, hopefully she can come back she hasn't been on tv i think since survivor series go home week um, so, yeah, we hope she can come back and be good again. Um, other news is WWE is looking to uh, expand their partnerships and everything like that. You know, they did, as Zio just talked about earlier, they did the partnership with uh, All Japan. Uh, they're looking to uh, partner up with other uh, companies in Japan. Um, it was a press release where uh, Triple H and Nick Khan talked about this during like an interview and everything like that. Obviously, this is very exciting. Um, you know, it's got, it's cool that they're partnering up with all these companies. Um, it's something that WWE hadn't done for a while. I think they were going to do it really big last year, but then Vince came back, and that kind of, uh, you know, put the tie on it. Um, so, um, you know, it's good that, you know, this is happening. I'm really happy about it. Um, yeah, how do you feel that WWE is going to partner with all these companies and everything like that? Kind of start to do that. Fucking love it! Can't wait! I'm excited. There you go. Um, I can't think of any other news. Uh, I know there's other. I, th I think we uh, covered everything. There's a lot to cover. Yeah, and we did. Uh, so. I mean, we were way, but we'll just mention it. Like uh, Dom and Ray resigned recently. Uh, Ray's due to come back pretty soon. I think he uh, did like an update recently, uh, talking about like his injury and everything like that. So, kind of good they resigned. Um, Cody. I heard, ha, has he re-signed? I heard that, like, uh, they're, like, working on trying to re-sign him, even though, like, his contract's still not even up for a while, so, um. Uh, they're working to get a deal done, but it's not at, up any time soon. Uh, Seth's deal is up pretty soon. It's up in June. I think he's definitely gonna re-sign. I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna keep saying that, though, because I remember I kept saying that Edge was gonna re-sign, and then he just didn't re-sign, so, like, um, it could depend on how the CM Punk stuff goes, but I, I, I'd be shocked if Seth Rollins doesn't. I have Seth and Becky yeah. are leaving. Um, uh, and if anything, if anything, they'll both resign and then just take time off. I know Seth. I know Seth for sure is going to need some time yeah. off due to his um, numerous injuries he's uh, act he's accumulated over uh, the past yeah. few years. Um. I think that's everything we have to cover news-wise. There's been so much news then because we didn't do the show for like three weeks. Um, you know. Yeah, yeah they covered um, everything. Pretty much everything. Um, if, I, if, if there is something, we'll just talk about it next week. Uh, I know this was a launch show, but there was, it, it was a PLE kind of type week. And we hadn't done the show in like three weeks, so we had to kind of try to get everything in here. Yeah, let's just start doing our plugs and promotions. Uh, is there anything you want to plug or promote? Um, I don't get anything this week, surprisingly. There you go. Can't, no can't promotions. Because this will be coming out after Warhammer. So, um, 
Watch SmackDown this week. And I they guess. watch NXT. Just be prepared because the Royal Rumble is going to be fucking going, amazing. So, you know, it's going to be awesome. I know you are. I, you're not even jealous, too. Which is... I'm not because I'm, <laughs> I'm happy for you. It's yeah. going to be a great show. Um, let's see CM Punk win the Royal Rumble. That's a wild statement to say in 2023 and in 2024. Imagine he's like, imagine he doesn't win the Rumble. He's like the, he's like the first guy out in six seconds. Like he breaks Santino's <laughs> record. Um, but anyhow, and then he quits. <laughs> goes back to AEW, quits that, and then goes to Impact, quits that, and goes to NWA, quits that. Goes and then comes back again. And I'm home. And then he leaves again. <laughs> and he's home again. Um, but anyhow, uh, yeah, as for my stuff to plug, I got a lot of stuff to plug. Uh, we just started a new YouTube channel called Casual Mania. Um, we don't, there's going to be a press conference that goes on that channel at some point. We recorded it last week. Um, but yeah, we'll get it out there at some point. Uh, we don't really know what's going to go on that channel. Um, Chris and I might start like a series. Um, where we both do, uh, do GM mode using either WWE 2K23 or 24. We're just kind of waiting to see. Well, we have to make sure we can get the stuff to work. And we're also waiting to see, like, you know, what would be the better option. Uh, and then, um, oh, and the Talkinator, uh, we have some videos. We were supposed to do a video every day this week, but the storm kind of. So we're going to do every day next week if there's no storm. Um, one of the videos Chris will be making his debut on. I won't say anything else. He'll be doing a non. He'll be doing a Don't non worry. wrestling video. But make sure you can watch. By the way, what we have to what we have to do for that. By the way. Um, I, I will. I'll, I'll find it. I think I. And, I think and I if you can find it, it send it to sure. me so I can. I think I have Paramount too, okay. so I should be good. Um, and then, if not, try to find it though, because my cousin can't get access to it. So. Um, yeah, I, I'll try. I mean. I remember pretty much what happened, but like, yeah, it's, I'll have to refresh yeah. myself. And then, um, yeah, check out this channel. There's a lot. There's gonna be a lot of stuff we try to get on this channel this year. Um, this, the only video, uh, it will be recorded this week. I don't know when it'll come out, but we, uh, Chris and I are gonna do the retro wrestling review series covering uh, the Royal Rumble 2020. What a crazy retro to do too, because so much changes after that. Retro. <laughs> Well, after that, yeah. A lot. Um, I remember watching that show. It was just yesterday, too. Um, I, I should have gone... We should, we should go back in time and just... Yeah, just a lot change. Um, Warp everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that would work, though. Like, would we give it to people then? Because we'd be vaccinated, but they wouldn't. I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. But It'd anyhow, uh, yeah. Make sure you check out uh, you know, that retro when it comes out. Uh... AW Sparks being recorded tomorrow. That will be out. That's going to be covering World's End and everything post World's End, minus the ROH stuff, because we don't cover that on AW Spoke. Um, yeah, then, fuck uh, it. WWE Aftershock will be doing another. We'll be recording another episode. Chris is going to miss next week, uh, but I'm going to find someone to do it. It's either going to be Steve Coakley or uh, the head of the table, uh, Christopher Watts. Uh, we'll do that one. Um, and then. Uh, there's nothing else really uh, announced for uh, anything else. Uh, just try to, you know, if you want to watch past content, go watch that. But that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, it's just to be able to in the past. We will talk to you guys in the future. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe.